We've Hold recorded on. episodes. This is Al Michaels right? calling right oh, now. Oh, he didn't him. let us talk to Larry David. Do you want to talk to Al? Yeah, oh, yeah, pick yeah. It up, pick it up, pick it up. Al, don't say anything. You're on speakerphone. Say hi to the uh, Pardon My Take guys. Hi, Al. Wait a minute. On today's Pardon My Take, we have a lot to get to. We have great interview with Chrissa Thompson, our friend Chrissa, in studio uh, the manager of the World Series Texas Rangers, Bruce Bochy, on the show as well. We are going to talk Monday Night Football. The Bills are in trouble. We're going to talk some college football, Jaden Daniels for Heisman. We have Hank's presentation about the Lighthouse, which he's been complaining about, no, crying false, about, false, 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 false. being a baby about. False, 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 and then we have false, Guys on false. Chicks. Great show for everyone. It is brought to you by our friends at the Farmer's Dog. The results of switching your dog's food from kibble to fresh can seem like magic with a senior dog starts acting like a puppy again and the pickiest of eaters can't wait for dinner time. You might think some spells were cast, but the farmer's dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients to make their fresh food. Just science. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced and made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. It's the best option for dogs of all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed, can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, and are extremely difficult to portion accurately. The farmer's dog just isn't isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion and smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. It is for dogs. Stella and Blake are farmer's dog dogs. They approve of this food. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to be, in, again, investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and fuller years together. I've been on Farmer's Dog for before they were a sponsor. Incredible, incredible product for your dog. Dogs absolutely love it, and it's super easy. It gets delivered right to your door. You put the packages. Uh, you can freeze them, then put them in the refrigerator. When you're ready to eat them, uh, give them to your dog. They absolutely love it. Give your dog some good food. Don't give them just whatever you find on, on the counter. Get them Farmer's Dog. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to farmersdog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, November 15th, and the Buffalo Bills stink. They might be dead. They might, they be, might dead. be dead. Let's talk window. You got to talk window. What's ready? The, wh ready? What's the window That's like? It's closed. You think it's officially closed? I think, I think they're about to jump out of the window. It's, that was a very bad Monday night football game. Hank, why are you taking a picture of me? He's doing a TikTok. He's doing a TikTok. I didn't mean to stop. He's what, doing hey, a TikTok. I, well, I had the there's over under cameras in here. I had the over under on when we we're going to get pissed off at Hank during this show at being five and a half minutes into it. Smash the under on that one. You know what? Hank is probably one of those. He's a plant. He's a comment section plant. Yeah. Because he was trying to derail us because we were actually going to bash the Bills. He's one of the guys who's like, you guys never say anything bad about the Bills. Mm -hmm. You guys are pussies. You're frauds. He was trying to get us off our game. I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my own TikTok. It's going to be one second with Henry Lockwood. For the entire year, yeah. one second a day. I like it. Three hundred sixty-five. Like teacher. Yeah, yeah. three hundred sixty-five days of teacher. Grumpy Hank. Oh. Grumpy Hank. Uh, okay, the Bills are bad. They're in trouble. Sean McDermott, bad. Uh, Ken Dorsey, fired. Which is, we know it. It's uh, shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic when you start firing offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators in the middle of the season. 
Uh, it usually is not a great sign. I have a question for you, for Big coach. Cat. With Ken Dorsey. Yeah. Um, did Ken Dorsey put 12 guys on the field at the end of the game last night? Ken Dorsey also didn't throw the interceptions that Josh Allen has been throwing more of. He has been bad. I think they need to get an offensive coordinator installed that will uh, tell Josh Allen harder not to turn the ball over. It's it's the – we know Josh is a gunslinger. Uh, I still think he's a very good quarterback. This season has not been good because if you look at his numbers, you can live when Josh Allen is in the high 30s and like the 10 to 15 interception range. Right now, through 10 weeks, he's at 19 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. The interception – on first down uh, at the end of the half when he basically gave them three points, that was really, really bad. And, I like, you can't win football games when, you, when, you're, when you're careless with the football like Josh Allen's been. He's been bad. Something is wrong. Uh, maybe it is the offensive coordinator. I think it also just needs – Josh needs to have, like, a come-to-Jesus moment of, like, hey, I can't be a superhero in, on every single play. I have to take care of the football better because – you're putting your defense in a bad spot. You're putting your team in a bad spot when you throw those type of interceptions. I thought the defense didn't play poorly at all last. No, they played well. They, they played pretty well. The Broncos had the ball and like at the fifty yard line every they, every every drive. Yeah, the the Broncos lived in between the thirty yard lines for like this entire game. So the defense in Buffalo is not the issue. Um, although it, it is kind of weird that they put twelve guys on the field for that field goal at the very end. Uh, McDermott also had, you remember, he had 12 guys, maybe even 13 guys on the field at the end of that Vikings game. He did that on that, purpose. That they didn't right? call it. Yeah, did that on purpose. Like, was this was this on purpose and hoping that they didn't call it because it was such a short field goal? It was. I don't it, know. It was it was a comical ending of the game because it was like Sean Payton was also trying to lose the game by doing using his timeouts and then doing the rush on the field uh, fire drill. But the biggest takeaway from this game, and we'll talk about the Broncos in a second because Russell Wilson actually does look good. Uh, is the Bills are broken. And they, right now, I would say almost, I don't think they're going to be in the playoffs. I don't think they are either. They have a really tough schedule. They're 5-5 five and five now, and it feels like everything, whatever it was, it was, you can point back to the 13 seconds, point back to DeMar Hamlin, the Bengals game last year in the playoffs, but something is very broken, and it feels like there's, Blame to go around a lot of places. Uh, Josh being – he's the quarterback. He 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 gets the blame when they don't win, and he gets the blame when he throws bad interceptions. And I think Sean McDermott, who has – he has had some bad moments this year, the 13 guys on the field, the, the weird travel to uh, London where the Bills clearly were sleepwalking the first half. Also, Sean McDermott, I know this is old school coaching – James Cook fumbles on the first play of the game. Doghouse. James Cook, I think it was his second fumble uh, in his career. Now, he did have some other weird moments because I think it was that was Josh's fault on the handoff, but then he also fumbled and picked it up, which was the coolest play ever uh, later in the game. Why would you bench your guy who is they, – they came out in the, the, the end of the second quarter and they had a touchdown drive where everything looked great, and it all started because James Cook was running the ball and being explosive and everything fed off that. You basically sat one of your key parts of your team because he fumbled the ball on the first play. It makes no sense. It dog makes house. no sense. Coaches, coaches have dog houses for running backs. They don't have dog houses for quarterbacks. If or kickers. If, imagine if, if you're, you no, bench they, your no. Imagine if you bench your kicker in game. Yeah, yeah. After that, he missed the that's game. what I'm saying. Or if you if you bench your quarterback because he threw an interception right. early in the game. It's only only running backs get put into the dog house. It's like I can't trust this guy. Well, um, maybe James Cook has like had a, a significant enough body of evidence to prove that maybe he can hang on to the football for a while. Right. If it's like a recurring thing where you where you fumble, and granted, running backs don't – it's not like you're uh, you're running the ball as often as you're passing in most offenses. Yeah. So if you throw one interception every, like, 35 passes, not as big a deal as if uh, you fumble once every, like, 12 carries. So I understand that. But but James Cook is a good player. It didn't really make a lot of sense that they were like, we're just going to do Latavius Murray. Yeah, let's let's now, build our offense in twenty twenty three around Latavius Murray. He's thirty three or how in running back years he's like thirty five. But yeah, um, it was he made some questionable decisions. I thought that the Bills um, the Bills offense would not be this discouraging if they didn't turn the ball over all the time. Like it looks like they've got guys in space sometimes. Um, Josh Allen, it, you could say it's a bad year. You could also point at either the Madden curse or what I think is more likely the Room 40 curse mm. ever since Josh Allen um, disgracefully desnutzed us on these very airwaves in front of children. 
um, he hasn't been the same quarterback. Maybe he needs to apologize for that. I'm not sure. But Josh, I, I like Josh as a person. I want him to do well. I root for Josh every time he plays. He's electric to watch when he's playing well. He has not played well this year. No, he's not played well, and, and and he has to figure out the turnovers because it feels like it's gotten progressively worse in the last few years. Uh, I think he has 71 interceptions since 2018, and I, I, I also think there's a – arm strength is a great asset to have, but it also can, can be a negative when you think you can make every throw all the time. I've watched it before with, you know, Cutler. Favre had a little of this where it's like I am, my arm is so strong – that I don't care what the coverage is, and figuring out how to 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 maybe take a little off, and also say I don't have to make every throw. I don't. Not every throw has to be. Oh, these guys are covered, but my arm is so strong I can get it in there. That decision making has to fix because otherwise the Bills are. I mean, I, again, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year, but we're talking long term now. Like this is something that he's got to start fixing right now so that he can build on it going into next year. I. The other, the other thing is Ken Dorsey, I do – I have no problem with Ken Dorsey being fired in the fact that some of the play calling is absolutely, like, tragic. The fourth and one shotgun, why – any team that's in fourth and one and goes shotgun should – the OC should be fired right away. Yeah, I you're, hate that. You, you have to get one yard, and you're like, now let's get seven yards. It's crazy. It's crazy. I hate so, that, and I – it seems like the running backs, they're they're on their heels. The quarterbacks are on their heels. They don't get a great running start. Just just do man football. Man so whatever football. Whatever happened to eye formation? Whatever happened to, to pro set? Whatever happened to offset eye? Whatever happened, under to good old center. Fa- whatever happened to good old-fashioned fullback, big cat? Whatever happened to two yards in a cloud of dust? What about John Kuhn? Uh, if, you need, if you need two yards, he'll get you three. If you need five yards, he'll get you three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it, it feels like they overthink all of these things. Um, we also now have Stefan Diggs. Uh, his brother said, got to get 14 out of there. Feels like, I mean, we've been on Diva Watch with Stefan, but it's, it is feeling like it's hit a critical point. Everything feels wrong in Buffalo. I yeah. feel bad for the people of Buffalo, but I think that they everything they we're saying, they know and they have known for, you know, the majority of this season that everything is broken and you have to figure out a way to fix it because uh, you paid Josh a lot of money, and he's got he's got to. It starts with him and the interceptions. I feel like Josh misses misses Dable. I think they ha- they had something really good together. I like Joe Brady though. Joe Brady was half of the uh, the offensive mind behind Joe Burrow when he was at LSU. He wasn't great in, in Carolina. He wasn't, but, but again, he was in Carolina. Now he's got a new chance. He's got a new chance. He's got a better quarterback. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see what they do. But yeah, I don't think that the Bills are going to make the playoffs. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and they, they their schedule is a gauntlet now. So that was supposed to be one of their easy wins, especially at home. And they almost that's the thing that's frustrating with the Bills. As bad as they have looked, they almost won that game last night. You know what I mean? Like they they go up with a minute left. That's just kind of how they've been living where even in their bad games, it's like, oh, they could win this game. They play the Jets, uh, who have their number, at Eagles, at Chiefs, Cowboys at home. How many of those are at night? That's the big question because this year Josh Allen has seven, Only one. seven touchdowns. Well, no, I guess he has, uh, what, eight touchdowns now and nine interceptions. Actually, none of those. None of those four I listed are at night. The okay, Chargers, good. The, the following week is a night game. That's very good because Josh Allen this year has turned into Kirk Cousins in primetime. Yeah, what are you going to say? That makes no sense. What, that those aren't night games? One of those games should be a primetime game. You think it'll be flex? It should be. Which not one? It's in Vegas, Tariq will be like, let's go. Chiefs, Dolphins, or Cowboys. Not, not Dolphins. Jets, Eagles, Chiefs, Cowboys. Eagles, Chiefs, or Cowboys. Yeah. Versus the Chargers. Yeah, Chargers. Well, the, the network's only night got game. to like block certain games, so like those are going to be America's game of the week with Nance and Romo for some of them because they're all four p.m. starts. Yeah, Josh has not been good in primetime this year. Also, the Chargers game is the Peacock exclusive game. Oh, oh, the cock and exclusive the cock. Saturday night. Yeah. Um. All right. Other side of this game, the Broncos. I don't know how it happened, but Russell Wilson looks uh, better, and and not, I don't want to say all the way back, but he is playing winning football. And making plays with his feet, and making nice passes, and not making the mistakes, I it's I'm kind of rooting for him because we, ourselves included, all of the media, everyone has sh- spent like a year and a half shitting on him. And what do we love to do as media and as Americans is we love to tear someone down and then be like, you know what, we're rooting for you to come back. Yeah, but it's and so, that's what we're doing. It's so fun to shit on Russell Wilson. I know, it makes but it's so fun, and I like doing it. Uh, but. Yeah, he looked good last night, and for the last couple of weeks, he looked good. He beat 
He beat Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen yeah. back to back. Pretty hard to do. And now let's see. This is this would be a two game winning streak for the Broncos when they're up at halftime. Mm -hmm. Before the before these last two games, the Broncos were 0 and 10 in their last 10 games where they had a halftime lead. No, uh, three games. Three games in a row. It's three done. games in a three row. Three games in a row they've done it. So it was against the Chiefs and then who else? Packers. The Packers, they had a halftime lead. Three games in a row after going 0-10 with leads at halftime. Uh, it does feel like they, they might have they might have found something, turned something around. Uh, Russell, to your point, like when he's making plays with his feet, he's a completely different player. I think for the last mm, four or five years, Russell got into the mindset of, oh, I'm, I'm too valuable to this team. I don't need to use my feet as much. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to take hits, which, yeah, there's a time and a place for that to be like a little bit more conservative and, and to get rid of the ball and to not want to run and, and avoid some of the linebackers taking clean shots at you. But it also makes you a worse quarterback when you are good with your feet and you don't use them at all. Yeah. And so he, he was doing that. He was taking hits downfield. He was scrambling. He was avoiding line. But he, he looked good. Russell Wilson actually looked good last night. Yeah, he's looked good for the majority of this season. It's funny because I, I feel like um, Sean Payton negged him into being good. Yeah. It's like all the talk has been Sean Payton has already moved on from Russell Wilson. He's He didn't pick Russell Wilson. This is going to be – they're going to draft the future of the franchise. Sean Payton's going to be here long after Russell Wilson is gone. Uh, and now I feel like that – Having that in your relationship where Sean Payton's like, I don't really care about you. Like, you stink at football. Russell was like, no, I don't. I'm still good. He uh, he fixed him by neutering him. Yeah. Which is and the just same by thing ignoring you do with dogs. Yeah. yeah. But he, he, like, took away his balls and said, I, I'm the big sack in town. I could care less whether you're here or you're not. And then you have to prove to me that you're going to be the quarterback. And, 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 and also. You're not allowed to bring your own trainer into the locker room. Yes. That, and not, you're not allowed to have an office. Yeah. That uh, no one else can go into. Hank, do you have an office? No, the good, good. NC has one here. Um, the last thing I had about the no, Broncos, Patrick Sertan is awesome. He completely shut down Stefan Diggs when he was up against him. Credit to the Broncos because I know there was going to be a fire sale. I'm a big believer. If you have really good players, you should try to keep them. And Agreed. he's a really good player and he's young and try to keep him. And also Mims is electric as a punt returner. That was a part of the field position is he had a couple that flipped the field for the Broncos. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. He had he had some nice returns. And we would be talking about this game completely differently if they had missed that first field goal and it had stood. Like if I we we still would be saying Oh no, I would we still, still say would, the, the we Bills still, are, are we broken. still would be saying that there's bad things about the Bills. Um would we give Russell Wilson and the Broncos as much credit if that kick goes in? Probably not as much. But it's just like it's 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 so funny how like one small outcome like that can determine being optimistic about the Broncos' future. Because I think if you're a Broncos fan, you watch this game, and this is a game that you lose every single time for the last two years, and you somehow figure out a way to win it. Um, you're feeling good. You're feeling really good about yourself this morning. But things it was a very, very fine line between winning and losing. Now, granted, the Bills are definitely broken, even yes. if they had lost that game. Yes. Or even, even if they had won that game. They're definitely broken. Yes. No, they're, they're completely broken. There's – I. It's it's a debacle right now for Buffalo, mm -hmm. and and again they have the gauntlet coming up. I do think that the Broncos, yeah, I mean, look, I guess they could find a way back into the playoff picture. I don't, I'm not going to say they're going to make the playoffs. They're in the hunt. They've at least they've at least found a way forward. If Russell Wilson's going to be on the roster next year, I know his contract. There's weird shit where like they have to cut him at a certain point. Um, but he he's playing to a level where it's like maybe we can figure out a way to use our assets, our picks, for something else besides a quarterback. Yeah, I'm going to defer to Florio on the contract stuff. He's he's always, like, right on top of that. That's the one thing that Mike Florio is great at. He can, like, identify a loophole on when you can get rid of a quarterback. You remember he had Derek Carr before yeah. anybody else did? Yeah. So, Florio, do some work on that. When could the Broncos potentially move on from Russell Wilson? Yes. Um, okay. Let's do some college football talk. Uh, we got a lot of college football to get to. Is there anything else in the NFL that we missed? I was going to say, weirdly enough, Sunday Night Football this week is between the two hottest teams in the league, Broncos-Vikings. Mm. Mm. Who would have thought? A few weeks ago, I would have called Flex of the Year on that. Now flex it's actually going to be a good flex game. Flex of the Year. What is your Flex of the Year? I'm still looking into it. Do you get more excited about the schedule than the actual games? I think so. Yeah. It's like looking I, it's, ahead. It's crazy. Yeah. I, 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 do, I, I think that actually is the truth, where you're like, yeah. look at this schedule. It's like uh, you're like a little kid who, like, you give them a piece of candy and they don't want to eat it because they like to just have the piece of candy. 
Yeah. Like, I don't want to watch the football. I just want to know that the football well, is going to be Well, I like watching it, too, but yeah. I also get excited The schedule is way, yeah. Jake, well, can, can yeah. you predict what the uh, the highest rated game this year will be from now until the end of the season? Starting now? Yeah, starting now. I can look into I it. care about ratings. Get That's how I judge guys. whether or not a game is good or not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before we get to college football, game time. We got two weeks left in the regular season of the college football uh, season. So game time will get you into all the games you're thinking about going to. Now is the time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is fast and easy way to buy tickets to all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. We're actually going to Ohio State, Michigan. We'll be using game time if anyone uh, in our crew is going to be going into the game. Game time has all of the deals, last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts, it's the uh, the place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section, and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings, and the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code PMT for $20 off the first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code PMT for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price, guarantee. Okay, college football. The story of the season. Uh, by the way, how happy do you think Dion is that the Jim Harbaugh thing happened? Very happy because his September and then the the backlash to losing in October and November has been completely erased by the fact that Jim Harbaugh has sucked up every headline. Uh, Jim Harbaugh suspended for three games uh, by the Big Ten hours before. Uh, well, no hours. Be- I think they actually were already on the plane to Happy Valley. So it was Friday. It was Friday. He found out by social via social media. So did Ward Ward Manuel, who is uh, the AD for Michigan. Jim Harbaugh suspended. Didn't coach the game on Saturday against Penn State. Um, and Jim Harbaugh went in front of the media yesterday and gave the most Jim Harbaugh quotes of all time. So he first started by saying Michigan is America's team. He said mm-hmm. it's got to be America's team. America loves a team that uh, beats the odds, beats the adversity, overcomes what the naysayers and the critics, the so-called experts, think. Well, they yeah, they do rely on a network of clandestine surveillance to yes. accomplish everything. I can see why that would align with the USA. The, the, the adversity is my favorite part of this because – it feels like the adversity was created by Michigan. Cut their own leg off. Yeah. Look, look at, look at me just gutting this out on one leg. Cut your own leg and be like, well, I, I can barely walk. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah. I, 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 first of all, was shocked to see Jim Harbaugh in front of the media at all because I thought that he died. Yes. I thought he was dead because um, after the game, when Sherrod Brown gave his speech. I fucking love you, man. I fucking love you, man. This is for you, Jim. This I, is for you, coach. I said it was basically the speech that everyone, uh, when they're on a bachelor party and they see their college friends or old friends that they haven't seen in a very long time, like 12 beers deep, sitting around, being like, I fucking love you, man. I fucking love you so much. We should get a house together. I honest- That was what he did after that game. I honestly thought he was dead. It looked like Riggs leaving Pinehurst. Mm-hmm. It, was, it, it was surreal. It was one of those moments where it's like, this is... We're definitely not a cult. Yeah, definitely not a cult. Um, now, I, I I love Harbaugh because he does give quotes like this, and he puts himself in the most ridiculous scenarios, and he's the ultimate football guy. He, yeah. So uh, the the other quote, the the biggest one was he had a raspy voice, and he said, "I'm the iron wall that viruses viruses bash against and shatter. So uh, something's going on there, but I'll get it worked out. Work it out of my system. Do some more push ups. Eat an apple." Mm-hmm. I'm an iron wall that viruses bash against and shatter. Jim Harbaugh is Dwight Schrute. I am a vaccine. He is incredible. Like the virus, show show me a virus. I will shatter it with my iron wall. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do so many push-ups that the virus is not going to be able to keep up. And I'm going to make, you know what? Jim Harbaugh actually thinks that he can make a virus tap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he submits them. Absolutely. I actually thought that the most surprising quote of the press conference chickens. was when he was talking about the chickens because we all know that Harbaugh in the past has says that he, he doesn't eat chicken because chicken is a nervous little bird that gives off nervous energy. 
In fact, uh, I was I was actually talking to a Michigan player yesterday. And he said the very first day that Harbaugh got to school there, he uh, he was inspecting the buffet line in their like uh, in the cafeteria for the team, and he walked up to the chicken because there were chicken cutlets, and he just stared at it and started scratching his head. Mm -hmm. And he pulled the nutritionist over. He said, "Hey, what's the deal with the chicken here?" They're like, "Well, it's got a lot of protein. It's lean. It's it's good for players after workouts." And Harbaugh was like, "I want you to do a study for me. I want you to." investigate because it's a nervous bird i want you to look to see if there's been any rise in mental illness in the united states and the consumption of chicken i want to see if there's a correlation between the two so he's been anti-chicken for a long time eating steak drinking milk that whole thing and then uh he's done a complete 180 yes. in a stunning turn of events harbaugh actually owns chickens now mm -hmm. and he praised them for being low maintenance high production and he said, uh, yeah, so he's he's now like a, a believer in chickens. Yeah, uh, they, they, he said they lay an egg every 26, 27 hours. They need water. They need food. I play with them, too. I let them out in the yard, run around. They're happy to see me. Yeah. He basically was like, oh, these chickens produce something. Yeah. I can win with this. Roosters are the first ones in the facility every single morning. It's, they yeah. don't read the press clippings. They take a shit on them. Chickens, he, he said, there was a time I said chicken was a nervous bird. I was dead wrong. Yeah. If I can change and you can change. Then we all can do it. What a beautiful it, moment. It's I listen, I know there's a lot of college football fans that hate Michigan at this moment. I get it. I think Michigan clearly did something wrong. I think they should be uh, you know, suspended or whatever whatever happens in the future, I'm down with. I love Jim Harbaugh. I will always love Jim Harbaugh. I will always ride with Jim Harbaugh. He is the funniest like guy basically ever in college coaching. And he's a great coach. I love him. And I do think there's a difference. So I thought the Big Ten was wrong for what they did because I don't know how you do an investigation that quickly and then be like, all right, three games, here we go. Like, if you think that Michigan did something wrong, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to most likely agree with you because it's, it seems like there's a lot of smoking guns everywhere. Due process still does matter. And just, and just like throwing something at the wall and being like, hopefully everyone will be fine with three games, which doesn't even really mean anything because he can coach during the week. It was such a half measure, half ass thing by the Big Ten that it leaves me like no, no other conclusion than the Big Ten has no idea what they're doing and they're just trying to save face. The funny thing is if you're, if you're a fan of Ohio State or another Big Ten school, I, I completely agree with being so mad at Michigan. Yes. And you want Michigan like kicked out of college football. You want the death penalty for Michigan. I would too if I went to one of those schools, but if you're detached from it and you can look at it from just an objectively ridiculous point of view, it's a very funny scandal that's happening. It's and Jim hilarious. Harbaugh is the perfect person to be having to address this and to deal with the adversity that he inflicted upon himself. This is good for college football because it's hilarious. That's it's so from my point of view, it's the funniest thing that's ever happened. Um, but again, if you're an Ohio state fan, you should want Jim Harbaugh like put on the nearest train and then taken directly to Chicago to go coach the Bears. Yes, please. That, and and you should want please. that too, Big Cat. Please. Uh, but yeah, this is um, it's it's funny, but I would also caution like if you're a fan of a serious college football team, if you love Ohio State, if you love Alabama, Georgia, any powerhouse school, USC, you name it, Texas. You should be very worried that due process right. is not existing because I got news for you. You're cheating your dick off too. It might you might not be doing it as egregiously as what Michigan is doing, and you're probably not going into like military grade sophistication with your surveillance of other teams. But every single school, if they're good, is cheating big time. And you don't want this to be the precedent for when you get caught. Because if you're a Michigan fan, and this happens across college football, it happens across all college sports. A little bit in pros, but mostly at the college ranks. We saw it last year with Alabama and their basketball team. If your team is the one that's being investigated, you turn you turn into a legal scholar so oh, yeah. fast. You do and so much reading. You learn so much reading. You learn all the laws about uh, uh, trans transferal of handgun possession. You learn everything that you have to know about. Like, okay, here's the NCAA bylaws that they're going to use to persecute us with, and here's how this does not meet X, Y, and Z criteria. And then everybody else in the country learned the top line it's like you're a bunch of cheating fucks you should be suspended immediately and then you just reply in twitters all day being like actually this is exactly what happened the only thing yeah. i'll push back on you for is alabama and georgia should not be worried because the one thing that you should always give credit to the sec is they do things correctly in the fact that they never 
punish or hurt their best teams. They're experts at looking the other way. They do They're, the like Greg Sankey would never do this. He would never do this. A team that is about is on the precipice of going to the college football playoff that is like the talk of the nation. He would never be like, hey, let's cut our own legs here and try to hurt our own conference. That's the difference between the SEC and Big Ten. We got Tony Petiti, a fucking moron. Like, dude, just figure out the fact that maybe we could win a national title for the first time in, in whatever it's been, like eight, nine years, and sh get the fuck out of the way and just say the NCAA has to deal with it. That's what the SEC does, and yeah. they, they win national titles. Tony Petiti needs to pretend that he's the cop from, from uh, the town when the nuns pull up after the bank robbery. Just look the other way. Yeah. I, I didn't see nothing. Just be like, look, Michigan, it, it's not fair. It, life is not fair. Here's a, little, here's a little lesson for everyone out there. Life is not fair. If you're Tony Petiti, this is different. If it was Rutgers, if it was Purdue, if it was Wisconsin, yes, that's different than Michigan. I un, I like Life is not fair. It sucks that I have to admit this, but Michigan and Ohio State are different than the rest of the Big Ten, and you need to treat them like they are different than the rest of the Big Ten because if the goal is to get as many bowl games and, and more money for college football playoffs and these big TV deals, you have to prop up your big time like breadwinners when it comes to college football. I think I I think I misspoke on his name. I think it's Sharon Brown or Sharon Moore. I said Brown earlier. I That's Sharon Moore is the interim coach of Michigan. He probably is happy he did that because you know he's like I listen. That was an emotional thing. He definitely the next day was like, "Whoops, yeah, I went a little too hard." May, maybe not though. Because maybe I bet you they had the the longest hug ever when he went back to the hotel. Oh yeah, Harbaugh, Harbaugh said he's like, "I'd die for that guy." Yeah, exactly. I love that guy. They'd both die for each other, which is beautiful. But Sharon Moore, uh, he's coaching on Saturdays. Harbaugh still gets to coach the team during the week. Well, Harbaugh's also coaching the game on the team on Saturdays because going back to the game, twenty eight runs in the second half, no passes. I know there was one pass that was a pi. That was Harbaugh. All like JJ McCarthy. What he finished seven for eight. Yeah, which and it's shocking because he's a good quarterback too. Yeah, and they were just like, you know what, fuck it, we're gonna run the ball down Penn State's throat the entire time, and yeah, it did feel like Harbaugh, like he was sending a like a smoke signal to Harbaugh, like this is for you, coach, I got your back, and uh, I don't know what the rules are, how close Harbaugh is allowed to be to the stadium. I know he can't be on the sidelines. He they, said he was five inches away from the TV when Sharon Moore was giving that speech. He was probably speaking. <laughs> like, during the game. He probably was trying to kiss the TV. If I was Michigan's AD, here's what I would do. During the games, I would give Harbaugh a headset, and I would say, okay, it's a one-way headset. They can hear everything that yeah. you say, but they can't talk back to you. Um, and just put it on him and have Harbaugh. He would totally believe that he's still coaching the game. Yeah. He even said when he was like, people were like, how are you dealing with all this stuff? He's like, I just dive into work, which is football. Yeah. I just want to coach football. Max was at the game. He said it was the worst sporting event he's ever been to. I mean, did you watch? The, it was horrible. Yeah. The, well, James Franklin is, I, I, I would assume all Penn State fans are now feeling like he has to go. I know he wins. He's, he's, he's won 11 games, I think, four or five times, but. It just never. He's never gonna win the big one. He's never. He's not going anywhere. Like the way, from what I've been told by other Penn State people that know more about me, is that the way his contract set up is that there's no way that you can get rid of him. Yeah, but we talked about this a couple weeks ago. If this, if it was still gonna be a four team playoff, uh, for the next like 10, 20 years, then you're looking at this and you're like, uh, yeah, Franklin, he's not gonna get us to that next level. He's got to go. You guys will be in the playoff. Yeah, but then it's just going to be the same thing. Yeah, no, he's like, never going to win a big 12, game. Yeah. You'll get to the 12-team playoff, and then you'll just see what happens against and, Ohio State and Michigan. And they're the Jets. I was saying this in memes. Penn State. They're not the Jets. Yes, they are. No, they aren't. They win 11 games. Yeah. But, they're not the well, Jets. I'm saying this year, like, the, the defense is really, really good, and you have a quarterback who's hyped up and, like, thought, he, thought that he was going to be the difference maker in the program. And then the quarterback just isn't good enough, and the offense is not good enough. Say what you want about the Jets, but at least they were smart enough not to play Christian Hackenberg. Mm -hmm. uh, that's different. Well, no, it's the same. Penn State played him, but college NFL. The the Penn State is a classic case, and and we're going to talk about Jimbo in a second, of a program having to come to grips with what they might be versus what the team, what what the the fans expect. Because if you asked. 90% of college football fans, would you like 11 wins a year and to be in like a New Year's Day bowl? They'd be like, fuck yes, I would. Penn State 
is one of those college programs that they have a history of national titles. They have a history of, of great success. And the bar is so high that James Franklin, as he can win 11 games all he wants, if he can't beat Michigan and Ohio State, that's not enough. But they still recruit like those guys. I know. So that's the difference is that like they bring in the guys that should get you to that next step, but Franklin just can't coach that big game. Yeah. He plays so soft. He coaches so soft. Every He's single got rock thing, for brains. It's, it's, it is runs up the middle, runs up the middle, Hope for, a, hope for a slant punt. and then punt on fourth and punt. one. Just punt. So He's many punts. punted so many times. And, like, I, 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 at the end of the day, I was like, all right, this is Penn State football. I'm not going to – I I don't get upset about Penn State football like I do other, other sports, but it's, like, it's still frustrating to see, like, the same thing over and over yeah. again. What are their rankings in terms of recruiting? Are they are they up there they're with up there, Ohio but State? But no, I, I, feel like, I feel like they're outside. They're in that, like – if I were to just throw a dart and say what I think Penn State's recruiting is like, I would say that they're probably 7th through 10th somewhere nationally. The the way the rankings have gone in the last few years is essentially there's Ohio State, there's Georgia, and there's Alabama. And then those three teams have dudes that are on a different level. And then the Michigans, the LSUs, the Florida States, the Penn States, they're right there, but there's still that gap between like – Oh my God! Right, but three teams. But the, the the that tier two is still competing for playoff spots. Yeah, sometimes like Penn State is never competing for that playoff spot. One time. Well, that's because like they right have now to play against Ohio State. They had they had the possible. Yeah, but so but right so now does LSU. Here here's the difference. Right now, if you look at 2024, and I don't know, you know, obviously signing day and all this stuff, everything can change. Georgia and Ohio State. Georgia has four or five stars. Ohio State has five. Penn State has zero. Like, that's the difference is, like, you can get a lot of four stars, but can you get the five or six or seven five stars every single recruiting class that those become the true difference makers when you play on Saturday? Yeah, the, so if you have a team of four, scar, four stars, you can beat the shit out of bad teams but, because you can run the ball, you can run the ball, you can run the ball, and then you can rely on, like, a decent passing game. If you have five stars at running back or at wide receiver – then that's when you can compete with that next level. And Penn State doesn't have that. But there's a tier two. Like, there's yes. tier one that is yeah. in the college football every year. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what, they're in it every year. There's a tier two that, like, every couple of years, they're going to they're gonna make it into the four seed, probably get smoked. But they're, like, playing for a, col for, for a college football playoff every so years. Penn State is in that third tier when they should be in that second tier. Yeah, and, and, and look. It also comes down to what you do with your five stars because that's exactly. that's yes. the biggest thing is like you have to – like, look, I'm looking right now at a random year, 2021, right? 2021, Penn State has had zero five stars. Alabama had seven. Ohio State had seven. Georgia had four. That's the difference. Is yeah. Those elite yeah. guys, those are the top three in terms of five-star recruits in 2021, having those elite guys and then doing something with them, like actually making them great. What I'm hearing, Max, is that you need to spend more time tweeting at high school players that are being recruited by Penn State, being like, "Hey, go, I can't, go I can't to put State. that much, go to Penn that State. much passion into, into Penn State football." The other thing is, uh, and and Clemson was obviously in that tier; they've taken a step back, but they were in that like they got the five, six, uh, five stars. I feel like Texas is getting up there too. Well, the the funny thing is, because we're going to talk about Jimbo, is looking at that 2022 class when he had eight five stars. And it was the greatest college football recruiting class of all time. And Jimbo Fisher has now been fired. Uh, his buyout is comical. He's owed $19 million in the next 60 days, another $7 million in the next 120 days, and then $7 million every year from 2025 to 2031. It's so good. So he gets he gets almost $27 million in the next like 90 days of his life. And then it's not offset. That's a crazy thing. Yeah. A lot of times coaches' salaries, they get offset. If you get a new job – then the money that you make at the new job counts towards what you're getting paid in your buyout, and you have to prove that you're looking for a new job in order to get that money. Jimbo's just going to get all this money, and we put a we put a price target on uh, the cost per barrel of oil a couple months ago at I think ninety dollars per barrel. It got to ninety, I think it got to like ninety three dollars, and then it dipped back down again. But that's when Texas A and M alum have real fuck you money when, once oil money gets once the oil prices get that high. It got so bad that they were like, you know what? Um, we're just going to say fuck it and get rid of Jimbo because we're going to have to go out get a new coach and we're going to have to fund that buyout too. 
and pay Jimbo Fisher, but it's not worth it having a team that's barely above 500 every year. And and the picture that's so funny is the Texas A&M donor giving a, a, like $160 million at halftime of the Texas A&M Mississippi State game that was literally just like, here's his bio. That was the, the 12th Man Foundation. That, yeah. that was like giving their annual donation. It was just specifically a check to get rid of Jimbo Fisher. And, oh, my God, you you pay me – that much money to fuck off and I am going to fuck off so hard. You will never see my face again. I would I would leave the country immediately. I would just yeah. I would buy an island. I don't know what Texas A&M does now because I think that might be the worst job in college football. And I know that people are like what the fuck are you talking about? You get paid so much money. The expectations are so crazy and like Jimbo Fisher couldn't he had the recruiting classes. The COVID year is weird. He won 10 games. He even beat Alabama in 2021. And it's still not enough. Like it's, I don't know who would want to take that job uh, if it's anything besides just a money play. Which yeah, I would I, hand yeah, up. Yeah, I, I understand. I would take that job, but you you have to take that job knowing you're going to get paid a lot of money and you're probably going to fail because you, you the 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 bar that they want to be at is so disconnected from where they are. Yeah, well, Big Cat, you forget Texas A&M has a history of winning national championships and winning ten games. Oh wait. That's right. They've won 10 games, I think, twice in the last 20 years. Oh, and oh, wait, the national championship that they won, I think, was 1937. Yeah. The most recent one. The uh, one name that they're looking for is uh, Oregon Dan Lanning, who came out and said that uh, he, this was his quote. I think I've been really, really clear here since day one. I'm not going anywhere. There's zero chance I'd be coaching somewhere else. I've got unfinished business here. Oregon fans rightfully were like, this is awesome. Happy he said it. That doesn't mean shit. I don't think he's going to take it. I he I think he very he, well could not take it. Yeah, we know though that college football coaches will say whatever they want to say in the moment and then take it later. Yeah, just coaches in general, will say, right? People in general, in fact, will say that until you put a big check in front of Nick, them. And they're like, "Yeah, I'll do that." Nick Saban said, "I will not be the coach of Alabama Crimson Tide." Yep, like two weeks before he went and was the coach of the Alabama Crimson. Yeah, Tide. Bobby Petrino said he wasn't going to meet leave the Falcons, and then he wrote a note on a napkin and left it in the locker room. Yeah. Oscar uh, Burr said uh, he actually had a good tweet because it was I, – I can't remember what the context was. It was something about players thinking about NIL and, like, it's a distraction. I think maybe Saban said it was a distraction. And he's like – he literally sat in front of the Michigan State team and was like, I'm not going anywhere, and then was at LSU two weeks later. Yeah. Brian Kelly didn't – Brian Kelly didn't even go to the senior, like, dinner at Cincinnati because he's like, fuck that, I'm out. Yeah. Like, coaches will do whatever – I. I it's great that Dan Lanning said it. I like Dan Lanning a lot. I'm rooting for Dan Lanning. I hope he stays because it's better for college football if he does and guys don't keep jumping around. But I would never, ever take a quote from a coach and be like, yep, good. We're good. Yeah. It's over. We're I would, uh, if I was a and I would look at Elko. They're probably looking at him right now. I would, I would be, sh I would be shocked. Why not Belichick? Belichick, why not? Well, they do have a history of bringing uh, professional coaches down to the college level. Yeah. I think Sherman did that, right? Why not Urban Meyer? Sherman, Urban Meyer at... He's a freak. It would actually be perfect if he was at A&M because it is, again, a cult. Yeah, it's just and freaks of different nature. Urban Meyer is the perfect cult leader. Yeah. I mean, he he sucked as an NFL head coach, but as a college head coach where he is like the warlord slash cult leader at whatever town he's in, then he's really good at that. And there's no more insulated place in the world than College Station, Texas. It so would be fun. It would be very fun if he went get him back in the SEC. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they probably are delusional enough to think that they can they can try to get Saban. They'll probably just like make a, a phone call to Saban and be like, "Hey, are you interested?" No, okay, sorry for bothering you. Um, Kansas head coach Lance Leipold. Lance Leipold. They'll Very probably good. talk to him. He's the only problem with him, which is not fair because he's won literally everywhere he's gone: UW, Whitewater, Buffalo, now Kansas. Um, is he's a little older, so that's like the the only thing that people are always like. Well, he's old. Who cares? He wins games. Yeah. Um, I also heard a rumor about Dan Campbell. Texas A and M alum. Oh no, you could never. Leave he, I don't Detroit. think he's going to leave Detroit. That would, uh, although, there's definitely a group of Lions fans who are listening to this right now, and it might not be a large group, but I bet you there's a group that are like, that'd be cool, because then Ben Johnson would be the coach, and they don't want to lose Ben Johnson. Yeah, I guarantee I, 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 you, there's some people who are thinking that in their head. They're like, because when you get that offensive coordinator whiz kid, and it's like, well, we're going to lose him eventually. There's, it's not a large amount. Maybe Lions fans, you can circle a trust. You can tweet me and say you've thought this, and it's not the worst thought. 
you can you can tweet me that. I hope Dan Campbell stays in Detroit. He's perfect for Detroit. But I guarantee you, there's some Lions fans in the back of their head. They're like, "Ooh, would that that would kind of work out." I actually think that's that's not a thought that you've had already, but it's a great spin zone to keep in your back pocket in case you do lose Dan Campbell. There's a couple. It's Lions a it's fans a perfect way to work it out and say, yeah. "Okay, well at least we didn't lose Ben." But yeah, ben, I, I think Ben is now our coach. I think 99% of Lions fans love Dan Campbell. There's just circle of trust. Around. I will not judge you if you treat me this. I will not judge you. Um. All right, last couple things. Jaden Daniels should be the Heisman. We talked about it quickly on Monday. I have some stats for you, PFT. Jaden Daniels uh, versus Florida had 372 passing yards, 234 rushing well, that's yards. That's been done a lot, hasn't five it? Five total touchdowns. First player in FBS pl history to have 350-plus passing yards and 200-plus rushing yards in a single game. Was that his Heisman moment? Listen. I want to hear what the Heisman if, moments are for his competition. If, I, if, we we also need to be – start like, he is Lamar Jackson when Lamar Jackson won the Heisman with three losses. Yeah. That's except, what he is. Except his stats might be better. So, yeah. um, we can look – his main competition, I would say, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, right? And then Marvin Harrison. Yeah. Obviously, if you're going to go with, like, the most talented player, Marvin Harrison probably, um, like, in terms of pure talent – and, and maybe, then a, maybe better, but and then a small sect of Michigan fans who are like, "Well, JJ McCarthy's going to be like forty-five for fifty against Ohio State for three hundred and seventy-five thousand yards." Yeah, you could do that. Uh, but if you look at passing yards, Jaden Daniels has thirty-three thousand one hundred sixty-four yards. Bo Nix has three thousand one hundred thirty-five yards. Michael Penix has three thousand five hundred thirty-three. All pretty close together. Uh, very, very similar in terms of stats. And the, then you go to rushing yards. Yeah. Jaden Daniels has 918 rushing yards. He's going to have 1,000 rushing yards this year. Bo Nix, 121. Michael Penix, negative 27. Uh, Jaden Daniels has more touchdowns, more rushing touchdowns than the rest of them. And his completion percentage is not quite as good as Bo Nix, but it's better than Michael Penix. So he, he also, here's some more stats. We're just going to give you guys all the things you need to go out and tell everyone. Jaden Daniels is averaging 408 total yards per game. Second place is 350. That's a pretty big difference. Most plays of 20-plus yards in 2023, Jaden Daniels has 76. Michael Penix has 57. And Bo Nix has 39. 76 plays of 20-plus yards. Here's quick power conference uh, ranks by stat. Jaden Daniels, total yards a game, first. Total TDs a game, first. Pass yards a game, second. Pass TDs a game, first. Rush yards a game, first. Rush TDs a game, sixth. QBR, first. Passer rating, first. Yards of play, first. EPA of play, first. I feel like I'm spitting bars here. These, he, he's leading everything. So I, I, found, I found another interesting stat on Death Valley Insider, and they compared Joe Burrow's 2019 with Jaden Daniels' projected yeah. 2023 uh, in a 12-game in a regular season. So here's what they're projecting to. Obviously, Joe Burrow, more passing yards, 4,366. Jaden Daniels on pace for 3,797. Uh, but if you look at total yards, Joe had 4,614. Jaden Daniels on pace for 4,809. And Joe had 47 total touchdowns. Jaden Daniels has, would have 46 total touchdowns on Man, pace. Come on. Now, it's not he as good. He doesn't play defense. Not as good as Joe Burrow. But if you want to just look at purely from a statistical point of view, Jane Daniels is really, really fucking good. And his defense is. One of the worst. The best. He's the best so player in college football this year, and that's what the award should be. It shouldn't be a team award, and we're completely unbiased in all of these takes. I, yeah, it's not like we're only saying this because we put a future on him to win the Heisman Trophy. I do like that there were some people being like, do you have a future on him or something? I'm like, yeah, we literally said it. We we put it in live on air on Monday's yeah, show. I, I'm just kicking myself I didn't get it at 900. I mean, that's okay. Let's just stay 500 the course. 500 is good. 500 is good. Stay the course. And Jaden Daniels should be your Heisman. Take these stats and spread them from sea to shining sea. Jane Daniels Heisman moment. He has a Heisman moment. I don't know what the other guys are. That's what I go off of. Yeah. It's just who has who has the greater one replay that you watch over and over again. Um, all right, last thing. Quickly, James Madison. I told you I would give you I, I would uh, I'm splitting my time now, um, because my football team is garbage. Uh I am splitting my time between Jaden Daniels for Heisman and JMU for a bowl game. Get JMU into a bowl game. Let the kids play. And you know what? And Jacksonville State. I'm going to say let Jacksonville yeah. State play in a bowl game too. Okay. Um, so it is a possibility. It's actually a, a, 
I'd say about 50% chance that JMU gets to play in a bowl game, even though they're not is this, eligible. Is this biased? No, no. Possibility I, if, or if unbiased? I, if I was being biased, I would say, like, they're probably going to play in a bowl game. Okay. It's, it's about 50-50. So they are ineligible to play uh, in the postseason. However, if there are not enough bowl-eligible teams in college football this season, then they will allow teams that are not eligible due to technicalities to play. Got it. So that's that's a real thing. I don't know if that would put them in a New Year's Six or not. And again, I'm speaking hypothetically. If they do happen to win out, they got game day this weekend, which is awesome in Harrisonburg against App State. And then they have Coastal in the last game, which are going to be two tough games. Uh, but assuming if they happen to win both those games, uh, then there are a number of ways that they could get into a bowl game. So, so who are we rooting against? So we're rooting against a lot of different teams. Uh, I can give you the entire list of teams that I'm rooting against. Rip right them now. off. So shout out to NIT Stu, who actually compiled all this for us. Uh, <laughs> FIU, Buffalo, Wake Forest, Colorado, Washington State, Hawaii, Houston, FAU, Cal, TCU, Mississippi State, Old Dominion, South Carolina, Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois, Navy, Rice, Western Michigan, Colorado State. And then we've got a bunch of others that we're rooting to lose two games including, unfortunately, uh, your Wisconsin Badgers, mm. which might happen, might not. Um, no, they're bad, so it could very well happen, although I kind of think that they're going to beat Nebraska because Luke Fickle said we're going to find out who wants to be here. Yep. That's always the sign of things might start to turn around because they're going to have a little, like, you don't want to be here, bro. So we just we just don't want teams to reach six wins, and if not enough teams reach six and wins. And you can also be bowl right. eligible at five and six. I believe. I don't know how all that works. I but think they changed it a couple of years ago. So there's uh, there's 40 teams that are in the hunt. JMU needs eight or more of those to come up short. Got it. So I think it's a, it's a good possibility. Okay. All right. 50-50. All right. We're rooting against those teams. I'm in. I'm in. I'm rooting against those teams. So everyone has their, their marching orders. It's to recap, Jim Harbaugh, funniest guy in the world. Uh, JMU needs to be in a bowl game. Jaden Daniels, Heisman. Yep. That feels good. I like, like where we, we're at. These, yeah. are, these are all fun things to embrace. Yes. Um, okay, now let's get to a not fun thing um, for Hank. It's Hot Seat Cool Throne. It's brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Fall doesn't have to be a buzzkill. Coors Light helps you find moments to unwind. Big work presentation, follow it with a happy hour. Some friends in a cold Coors Light. Weekend chores, take Saturday off and hit the tailgate, even if you don't have tickets to the game. That actually is a great tip. There's nothing better than tailgating. Whenever you maybe get like a good TV in the back of a truck, that's just as good as going to the game. Whenever you need to hit reset, reach for a Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains and the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way, you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So you want to hit the reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light, the most delicious beer in the world. Our favorite beer. Mountains on the cans and the bottles turn blue. Hank, hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is Bally Sports Southwest No, it's you. It's you. It's you. My cool throne is me. No, your hot seat is you. Why is your cool throne you? Do you decide what my hot seat cool? Well, you, I think the listeners decided because it took you this long to come up with this. Point. All right, fine. I will ignore that. I guess if you want to get right into the presentation, yeah, let's right do it. You guys, you guys are you guys are absolute divas. Today. Hank through. There's a hundred cameras in here. Hank, I take pictures of you guys all the time, and I take my phone out. You guys, are like, oh, it took me five minutes before I get pissed off at Hank. Do you get pissed off at this camera? Do you get pissed off at no. that camera? Do you go, so what? So the difference between the these cameras and being like. Oh, what, what's the, the show? Well, hey, Hank, you came into this room at the very start of the show before we even started taping. You shot me a look. You're giving looks today. You're giving looks. No, you, you came in and go, did you do the presentation? It I was said, a question. It was a valid question, especially question. considering the events of last Tuesday. Here's what Hank did. He tried everything to not do this presentation. He told me he had a call I did. right as the show started. I did. He you named heard some me on the call. fake company. It's a then he came in. He came in and he unplugged everything with the with the TV so that Max and Memes had to hustle trying to get everything set. He was like, oh, the presentation doesn't work. The presentation doesn't work. It works. We're ready to go. Let's go. Let's see this presentation, bucko. All right. Well, you know, I did I did a lot of thinking yeah, the past couple of weeks. You like I don't that? think I've ever heard you bucko him yeah. before. 
When you bucko a guy, that's so much worse Let's than Do bunny. it, bucko. Come the on. assignment Come on, at Chief. hand. If you are you guys gonna let me speak for this one, or are you just gonna interrupt me every two seconds? No, please. No, go ahead, sport. Uh the assignment at hand was to do a presentation about how the Gillette Lighthouse was not real, which you know, I think part of the reason why I struggled to get it done was because I had already admitted that the lighthouse was not real. And we had spent a lot of time going through reasons for what, you know, makes a real lighthouse and what makes a fake lighthouse. Yeah, because you keep bringing it up. No, you guys kept bringing it up. And and <laughs> my point being that I didn't know how to do a presentation where, you know, explaining why the lighthouse wasn't real when we've already gone over that and I've already admitted that it wasn't real. So... I, you know, decided to to think bigger and and go into what reality and what's real and what's fake really means. So, without further ado, did you get meta with it? You got metaphysical. Let's begin. Uh, Wait, Hank. Right off the bat, um, I have one one gripe about the opening slide of this. Okay. What does the date say on that presentation? Uh, that was just the day I started it. Oh. Henry John Lockwood, eleven five, twenty twenty three. And today is what the fourteenth. That should say the fourteenth. Well, I can't help when I start. Like, I've been working on this for a while. Like Do you I always said. date your PowerPoint presentations <laughs> yeah. when you make them? Okay. Also, Gillette is spelled incorrect. Good point, Wait, Jake, Jake are you... Like, no, that's, what? That's, no one that's, gives that's a, a, great that's point. a good point, Jake. Great point. Cut his mic. <laughs> okay. Not joking. Uh, Which lighthouse are you talking about here, Hank? The Gillette lighthouse. Oh, because that's a different lighthouse with one T. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the date's wrong. The date's correct. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, this, I mean, Max is four manics fucked up. He's literally lying on the ground right now, flopping around. Didn't even give me the presentation the way I sent it. Uh, this is supposed to be a lot clearer. I don't know why it's see-through, but what does real and fake actually mean? Real, the definition is actually existing as a thing or occurring in fact, not imagined or supposed. Fake means not genuine or counterfeit. Huh. So, counterfeit's an interesting word. With with that being said, I I would like to now open it up the floor to you guys. I have some examples, and you tell me what's real and what's fake. Okay, so you're opening up the floor for questions. No, I'm opening up the floor for you guys. Well, we're not allowed to talk. You're at. Well, you've interrupted me a hundred. What do you think opening up the floor means? It means you guys can give me you you have one you have two words. I don't think you know what opening up the floor means. I'm going to show you pictures. You each no no other commentary, just real or fake. All right, I'll play. Next slide. That is Jesus Christ. I think he was a real person. He existed. He existed. So real or fake? He existed. He existed. Real. Real. All right. Next slide. He didn't look like that, though. Yeah, that's not a good pre- representation of Jesus. No. So you're saying that there's some debate on whether it's real. No, no, I'm saying no, no, that, that, real person. that picture right there as a person. is not a likeness of what Jesus Do you was. have a picture of what? He looks like. Yeah, they made a. They made. They, they tried to get a. a well, that, a, a, that a, 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 would you call it a rendering? You remember that painting? He was a real person who existed. Do you have proof? Yes. There's Let's historical see, record me, of me, Jesus. Me, help me, help Council me, of Nicaea. Tap you in. Okay. I just don't know how you can say that's not a real picture of him if you don't have a real picture. Okay. What's well, a drawing? But whatever. Okay, go on. It's clearly a drawing. Uh, he didn't mo- have pictures back then, idiot. <laughs> the moon landing. Real. Real. How is there wind on the flag? It's not wind on the flag. They put wires in the flag to make it stand out. That's actually a fact. You can see the wires. Next picture. This pair of chests. I'm very bad at this. (laughs) This pair of chests. I'm going to say real. (laughs) Hank, there's only one chest there. Real. Uh, Yeah, I'm also bad at it. Um, I've been berated several times for not correctly identifying fake boobs. I'm going to say those are... They look real. Those are. I think they're fake. I think those are fake. Next slide. These Christmas trees. Uh, Let me take a look. Fake on the right. Uh, They're all fake. Fake, fake, fake. The Big Bang? Real. I didn't ask you to go to the next slide, but uh, go ahead. Real. Yeah, it's real. We doing evolution now? I'm just asking questions. I'm just yeah, trying to. Re- I'm it's trying, real. It's I'm just, real. I'm, I opened the floor for you okay. guys. I wanted some. Yeah, it's the real. Floor. Is there a point to all this? Or are you are you actually? This is like your Hank doesn't know whether these are real or fake. He's like, this is a perfect chance for me to ask some questions that I never. I feel too stupid to ask. Is the Big Bang real? You guys tell me. 
I know, obviously, but you tell me. But there's no proof of the Big Bang being real. It's, there is. a lot of proof. There's a Scientist. shitload of proof. Just look at Neil deGrasse Tyson's timeline right now. I'm sure he's tweeted about it nine times today. You're talking about evolution. I believe in evolution. I do not believe that we all just sprouted out of nowhere and and a dude gave a girl her, her, his rib and was like, here, now you're a girl. Some, some, some would argue that we're living in a simulation. Some would argue that the Big Bang's real. Some would argue that, you know, those boobs are real. Those boobs are fake. Are you think, questioning just, I like, think science? Everything. There's questioning arguments, everything. and there's there, you got to question everything. That was kind of the... Are we uh, doing Flat Earth next, the Kyrie? Hi, the hypothesis that I went through is, like, yes, technically, by definition, some would say that this lighthouse is not real, but there's some that would say that it is real. I, I want to give, give Hank credit, because... Hank, actually, this is a genius argument it's muddying that, the water. That, that you're making right now yeah. by by taking the entire concept of what we think of as reality and questioning it. That's the only way out of this. I actually I think Hank is, is doing a good job. Next slide, please. Iris Murdoch, you guys are familiar, famously said, you tell me we live in a fantasy world, a world of illusion. The great task in life is to find reality. You could put any quote anywhere and just put a name under it. Be like, here's this quote. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, look, I'm looking up a quote right now. The Gillette Lighthouse is completely fake, and anyone who thinks it's real is an idiot. Donald Trump. Trump would never say that. Uh, he absolutely uh, Hank, w what's your favorite Iris Murdoch novel? Uh, probably The Great Gatsby. Uh, next slide. <laughs> Now we go on to the the, the we we he got that never even read the Great Gatsby. Okay. You just know it's a book. I mean, yeah, dude. He might I think that's F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, green light, green light across the pond. Uh, <laughs> lighthouse is a you just described a lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, so anyway, the the question of what's real and what's fake can can be questioned by anyone. You could, someone could say something's real, and someone could always have an argument that it's fake. Just because someone you know has proof that something's real doesn't mean that it necessarily is and it's our job you, you, as humans to determine find you know find what's an illusion and what's reality like that's our our daily task is what is real and what is fake some things is, Hank, yeah, I, I they get, might be like some things like you know jesus it may maybe he wasn't real maybe those things weren't real but he's a symbol he's a symbol of hope yeah he's a symbol yeah, of of you're, you, what we're going for you're smart what you've did, done you've Continuing. basically been like there are a lot of idiots in this world me being one of them well, also, I think maybe Hank's been hanging out with somebody that has a history of questioning whether or not things are real, and that has rubbed off on him. Oh. Lighthouses in New England. Uh, wait, go back, <laughs> please. Can you respect my slides? The first lighthouse was built in North America was the Boston Light. So okay. it was built in Boston, in Massachusetts. It's been a, a symbol of our state, of our region for a long time. It's a, a beacon of hope, if you will. Is that real? Next slide. Is that lighthouse real? That lighthouse is real. I don't know what. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. Just I want to set the ground rules. So that lighthouse is real. Got it. It depends on who you ask. This is Sally Snowman. She was the last lighthouse keeper in America. Would. So she, she is retiring at the end of 2023 20, and will not be replaced. So in 2024, being a lighthouse keeper as a job is not real. In no, it's still a real job. It's, just it's not don't have it anymore. Anywhere in the world, in America. Okay, is this? That's my world. Does she still is, a real job? Is Sally Snowman currently a lighthouse keeper. I'm saying in 2024. Right, okay, but right now, yeah, right this I second. saw that you put the date at the start of your presentation. What was that again? November 5th, 2023. 2023. Okay, so as of the date of it's this taking me a long time to come to these conclusions. As of the date of this presentation, it's a real job. Got it. But in 2024, it will not be a real job. However, okay. in 2023, it was a real job. So it, it kind of opens it up. It's like it is. things can it, be real at some point, but fake <laughs> in others. How does that work? You can't say in 2023 it was. It is. Next, okay. next slide. Uh, the last major lighthouse built in America was in 1962. It was Sullivan's Lighthouse in South Carolina. That was until the Gillette Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. In conclusion... Uh, it's our job as as humans, as intellectuals, to you know sift through the nonsense and and the illusions and determine what's real and what's fake, so, and and really just find those those beacons of hope. Just because someone tells you you know Jesus wasn't real, it doesn't mean you can't use him as a symbol of hope. Just because PFT says this lighthouse isn't real, it doesn't mean you can't 
it's not it doesn't have to be real to you and as a region so i think it's like maybe it's not real to you guys it's like wrestling but patriots fans new englanders they will recognize this lighthouse as a real thing as a beacon of hope and as a symbol of our our team in our region so that was kind of what i came to it was hard you know obviously i had to say the lighthouse wasn't real but in doing my research and and coming to these conclusions it's just not real to you guys I think that's I think dumber. that's I think that's fair. I've gotten dumber. I think Hank took the weirdest possible way to reach uh, a reasonable conclusion, which is if we believe in the lighthouse, then it's real. Well, I didn't know what, what the 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 task was like. Make a presentation about how the lighthouse isn't real, but we know we've gone through that. Right. So you I just didn't had know, to say it's not real. I did just, on the show. Right. When they after they lost. I mean, I like the presentation was good. You've confused everyone, which was smart. You did kind of like a, hey, look at my thumb, G, you're dumb. Slap him in the face. What is real? Is this real right now? I, 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 you know, some are, some are saying that, you know, the Big Bang Theory is really the big question. Like, some, some are saying that we're just, uh, it was, it was a comment. It was an Elon Musk TikTok and it was a comment in the TikTok. So not an Elon Musk quote. <laughs> this, is Billy, this, is Billy, this is the Billy football. Team. Some are saying that we are, uh, Living in a simulation, and yeah. the simulation is to determine how humans will deal with AI, and we're we're about to come to that. that that's about to come to a head, and that has to do with the lighthouse. How? Okay. The Big Bang Theory. Did it happen or not? We might not even be here. Exactly. Nothing is real. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you did a good job of of confusing everyone. That was actually very smart of you, Hank. I give it an A plus. It was good. Why? Well, I, I, you took the right route. Was just question everything mm -hmm. literally everything and so then nothing can be proven what's, what's that on the slide? slide what is that slide it's a zoomed in sally snowman yeah. memes and max are loving oh. it I, it looked like rico i like <laughs> sally snowman i'm a sally snowman guy goat sounds like a character in a children's book mm -hmm. <sighs> all right hank good job thank you are you feel good that that's done with yeah it's stressing me out yeah I know, we know how much of that slide did you do yourself all of it mm. All of it? The Boston light. I, <laughs> I, I, I had DMs from people, but I had to go. I went the whole the whole beginning. I think the only slide that you know I had some help with was the the Boston light. I mean, it, it was a good presentation. You have us questioning everything. Nothing is real. Or is everything real? That's on us. Who's to say? That's for, yeah. that's for us to determine. That's, that's the conclusion only a man who is like... <laughs> Very upset with the state of their football team would reach. Yeah. Well, none of this really even matters. This is really, yeah. When you zoom out, you're like, this is where the Patriots season is. We're doing a presentation on what's real and what's fake. I mean, I've talked more about lighthouses this year than the Patriots. That's probably a fact. Yeah, that is yeah. a fact. That is a fact. Because yeah, you keep bringing it up. Yeah. No, I'll never bring it up again. I never want to. I mean, it's it's done. It's settled. We've we've gone through the exercise. It's up to you whether to determine it's real or fake. I choose real. You choose fake. It's like, it's, it's like religion. You it's know? still real to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great job, Hank. Thank you. Great job. Was great it a great job? Yeah. Hey, everyone, everyone watch the YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube, Hank's presentation, what is real? But if it was good or not, it's entirely subjective. We don't know. That's true. We don't know anything. Good point. If we learned anything, we don't know. Mm -hmm. That's really the biggest takeaway from Hank's entire presentation. No one knows. Question everything. Nobody can ever be wrong. <laughs> all right, PFT, your hot seat, Cool Throne. Uh, well, first of all, Hank, did you do uh, Cool Throne? Yeah, my cool throne was the lighthouse presentation. Oh, okay. And then hot seat, seat was my okay. hot seat was the Bally Sports no, executive. No, your hot seat was you taking the clip down. Yeah, about James Harden. That was soft. It was soft. That was a good speech the guy gave. It was impassioned. He was, he was just right. He was he was right. Is it, impassioned a word? Yeah, it was an impassioned speech that yeah. he gave. It was emotional. It was just direct. passionate. Well, it was an impassioned speech. You can't say it was a passion. Passionate. Is it? Im M passion, M passion, M passion. impact like what EM, like empathy. What you become that? passion, empath, showing yeah. intense feeling. Yeah, I, there it is. Yeah. So I nailed yeah. it. I am an empath, so only you're not I the only nerd here, like Jake. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, my hot seat is Connor McDavid because his coach got fired again. Yeah, so it's time to ask the question: Is Connor McDavid a coach killer, Big Cat? Because this is coach number four, I think, for him. Not only did his coach get fired, but they lost their number one fan. Ryan Whitney. He has he has he has uh, renounced, disavowed the Oilers, which actually has made them win. Because mm -hmm. uh, so, 
this is going to sound sad for me. Uh, I did put tweet alerts on for Whitney because I saw that he was doing Twitter spaces, emergency Twitter spaces. And w- let's just say we l- we love Whitney. He's our the number one guest who's been on this show. Um, he's not really a guy who's like going to, you know, be working overtime. So when he was doing the Twitter spaces, I was like, this is good. So but now I have tweets, uh, Twitter alerts on for him. And all he does is just be like, think like congrats to the Oilers for winning. You're lucky that I like stop being a fan. Yeah, well, they should be. They, so here's more Twitter. Here's the thing. Wit. Here's the thing with Wit is that Wit now gets to claim that he was initially right. He was only wrong about changing his mind and being wrong. Yes. So his original take that they suck was correct. But this is uh, yeah, it's uh, Connor McDavid's fourth head coach. A lot of people are saying he's a coach killer. I'm going to say that he's a coach killer just because it's fun. And I have no idea if it's true or not. But it's always good to like just slap that label on a really good player. Coach, killer. you're so good that if you don't win everything all the time then it means that you suck actually yeah speaking of uh twitter spaces did you guys see the dolphins fan invade the jets twitter space i know yeah it was pretty good this is very funny Uh, this is just classic radio prank two points i just wanted to make i i was a big robert sala fan like i because of what he did with the defense i thought he did you know a really good job and i you know i thought keeping him or letting him go after the season was going to be a huge mistake but Holy shit, I don't know what the agenda is behind the scenes with Zach Wilson, but it's fucking disgusting at this point. Uh, second point I wanted to quickly <laughs> make was... <laughs> Y'all fucking suck! Fins up, baby! <laughs> <laughs> this is all... all- all, all Jets. It's oh, just, that's it's a, great! It's just a Jets Twitter space with like eight hundred people. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love the idea of the Jets fan like kicking him off and then looking at his phone, and be like, "Get the fuck out of here, man!" How like, we let this guy in, staring just solemnly at his iPhone. Oh, that's great. That is great. It is good. Um, and our friend Pete Blackburn pointed out on Twitter that every coach that McDavid's had has had some sort of a dick reference in his name. Oh, so just something. To get, he's got knob lock now. He had Woodcroft. He had Tippett before and then ken hitchcock oh i've been all of his coaches so he's got a type and he likes getting them all fired okay so i'm just i'm excited that we have that narrative now yes Connor mcdavid agree you have to latch on to a narrative in a sport that you i consider myself to be a hockey expert but i know that a lot of people in this room don't um but it's good to just take if you're a puck boy find a narrative and then just latch yeah. on to it coach and, killer. and keep repeating it coach killer uh my cool throne is diapers mm. diapers on my cool throne because um Dan Campbell has been asked about his fourth down choices that he's making, how he's going for it so often on fourth down. And he is advising Lions fans to wear diapers when they watch the game. Ooh. He says, here's what I would say, because I tell my family this, just wear a diaper before some of these games. I'll give them an alert and say, put them on and be ready to roll. Only Dan Campbell could describe putting on diapers as being ready to roll. Ready to roll. Like ready to shit yourself. Yeah. I actually, I don't hate the idea. All cards on the table. I have worn a diaper during a game before, mm-hmm. uh, so you can pee yourself. You can be a pee dog. Yeah, I did it one time when the lines at the bathroom were very, very long in the stadium. You can dipe up for a game. Yeah, dipe up start for a game. Doing this with my kids, I'm gonna be like, "You're ready to roll." Yeah, just Need ready. Diaper on. Ready to roll, baby. Ready to roll. I actually act the day and poop your pants. I start. I might start wearing diapers when we're watching NFL streams on Sunday. That won't be gross. You got seven hours of football. I'm that gonna be like, like a bit we could leave on the table. It's like Mel Kiper. Mel Kiper in the draft. Yeah. There's bathrooms right next to us. Yeah, but I understand the principle behind it. Yeah. Which is it's it, a good it, in principle. I think that's where we're it's good be. in principle. Yeah. And yeah, I mean you pee in the sink. I do. Yeah. But that's a hole. That's a drain. It is a hole. I don't sit in my own urine. You just we just wash dishes in it. You've also peed in the sink. I have peed in the sink. Yeah. Um but yeah, don't Dan Campbell stones. Tell, telling telling talk about the old office piss sink now that we're not there anymore. Yeah, I mean I think I talked about it when we were there too. Yeah, there was a there was a sh- uh, shop <laughs> sink that no one used in the hallway. Did you get busted? I got there was busted. a couple oh, times where someone busted. maybe came around the corner and I had to zip up real quick. No. Like, oh, no, I, wash my hands. I, I got busted. It was during a Sunday. I was peeing in the shop sink, and um, which is just in the for, for like the reference. It was in the hallway, in the middle of the, the hallway. hallway. It's a hallway that's not yeah, used in on a Sundays. business. That shit, like it was our office, and there was like three other businesses in this same. But we only had two bathrooms for fifty people. I know, but yeah, but just, we had can, we had two, not just two bathrooms. We had two toilets for yeah, fifty people. Fifty people, and so there was a shop sink that was in the back hallway to the businesses on a Sunday. Nobody else used this office. It was which just, I put everyone onto. I was like, "Yo, guys, there's a sink we can piss in." It was just us for the most part. The rule was just put leave the water running. Yeah, 
running. Leave the water running. Yeah. Don't poop. It's number one only. And so, uh, yeah, I went back there. I relieved myself. I was like the fourth person to use it that day. And then I heard uh, footsteps around the corner. And as I'm zipping up, this woman's like, excuse me. And I looked at her and I was like, can I help you? And she was like, yeah, I work here. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hey, well, I'm pit. I piss here. Sorry. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. This is I'm working right now. Actually, there's listen, Max, what are you going to say? You're going to say that it was bad. No, I was just going to say you're like, yeah, we only did it on Sundays. Did, I don't oh, think I did that's true. Every yeah. day. Yeah. I only <laughs> pee in that sink that was... on Sunday. Listen, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, I pee in the sink in my house. Every other pee in the sink in the office setting has only been because we have had a limited amount of toilets. It was the old New York office, the first office that we had like 100 people in two bathrooms. That was when I started pissing in the sink. I, I only do it when I have to. What if your son sees you peeing and starts doing it? I'd be like, well. look, this is what we do. We're men. Do you have a do you have like a, a specific sink or is it just all sinks or all on the sinks. table? Yeah, kitchen sink, no problem. After I do the dishes, give myself a little reward. <laughs> I would love to see a urinal built into this studio right here. That would be back nice. over in that corner. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. It would be a good spot. Um, all right, my hot seat is Max. Max, you're on the hot seat. Oh, I think I know. This why. isn't this isn't a college basketball show. No, no. it's not. Yeah. Oh, you have so many losses, you don't even know what you're on the hot seat for. I know what it's for. You're on the hot seat because the Philadelphia Water Dogs are now oh. the team. The Water Dogs are in Philadelphia, and uh, so they announced all the. That was a good clap, Jake. No one else clapped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, exciting. Well, it's more of yeah. a boo, but so I'm we a, I'm a team we guy. we've been given Philadelphia as the uh, the home of the Water Dogs. Fitting that we finished second last year, Max. Every time that we lose, it's your ass. No, we now we b- band together uh-uh. as a group. Oh yeah, because I really ban- oh I band together to root for the Water Dogs. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. F- valid. Were you valid gonna say uh, I would. I just had a question, but you answered. I was. I forgot what place that the Philadelphia Water Dogs second. finished in last year. Second. So we're the Philadelphia yeah. Water Dogs. I love it. I love it. Philly, Philly. I, when when Ray, when Paul Rabel was talking us talking me through the different options, I was like, it'd be weird if you know, like we did Boston or DC or I think it was Great Lakes maybe uh, for the Midwest region. I was like, why don't we just put this all on Max? That seems. I'm I'm happy to have them. I'm happy to have the the dogs. I'm happy, I'm happy to ride I'm happy with to my blame guys. I'm 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 ready to go. I'm ready to go to battle for my guys. I don't think you are. I, I am. I'm very excited about this because Philly's a great sports town. Great sports with passionate town. sports fans. Um, such as yourself, Max. I would like to see an SEC type atmosphere, kind of like the bank, yeah. kind of like a a, yep. G- a JV version of the bank. It would be a shame if we started throwing batteries at the whip snakes. We don't do that anymore. Why did I say? I said, do you want to replay what I just said? Yeah, that would be it. Would be a shame, but it would be a like, real yeah. shame if no. we did a pardon my take battery giveaway. I would right actually for one of the games. I would like our stadium to be like the uh, the safe space for Philly fans to be able to do all the stuff they used to do. No, I want them to like be wild. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We should bring we should bring Santa Claus out every halftime and have boom. the crowd just boom. Yeah. Just get it out of your system. Yeah, right. we that, want the nastiest fans in the world. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, trash. yeah, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, we. Will, I want exclusively exist. Philly trash <laughs> at this game. No you one just likes have us, to. You care. literally, you literally just have to open your eyes and you you open your eyes every day and it's trash. Okay, fine. <laughs> Max, this is exciting. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I'm water ex- dogs. I I love my water dogs. <laughs> my boys are my boys are going to be fired up to play in Philly. This group is going to be fired up for Philly sports. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. The correct way to pronounce is the fluffy water water dogs. Water dogs. Fluffy water dogs. Fluffy? Fluffy. Fluffy water dogs. If, you're just saying different <laughs> letters. It's the fluffy water dogs. That's how you say it in Philadelphia. Oh. Fluffy, the, fl- the fluffy water dogs. Yeah, I don't think anyone says fluffy. They say fl- they they. It sounds like fluffy when they say it. Fluff. I like the fluffy eagles. Like the Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like that. Yeah, yeah like that's it, not fluffy. If you're enough. if you're drunk enough, it sounds like fluffy eagles. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. Uh, all right, so big announcement. Yeah, that's great. Uh, my cool throne is Giancarlo Stanton. So he now gets a pass to be injured because Brian Cashman did a press conference. And Brian Cashman said, "We try talking about John Carlos Stanton. We try to limit the time he's down, but I'm not going to tell you he's going to play every game next year because he's not. He's going to wind up getting hurt again, more likely than not, because it seems to be part of his game." 
Mm. Cashman, what a quote. <laughs> so in this in this press conference, was this the same one where he's just standing outside like yelling at reporters? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like he's a, that's a man that knows he might get fired soon. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so you I see like the it. agent's response? No, what do you say? Stanton's agent responded today. I, I read the context of the entire interview. I think it's a good reminder for all free agent, agents considering signing in New York, both, both foreign and domestic, that to play for the team, you've got to be made of Teflon, both mentally and physically, because you can never let your guard down, even in the offseason. Mm. Cashman might be trying Disaster. to get fired. That's what, I, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Like yeah. he, It's a man that knows that. Yeah, he I, actually, I think he might. I think he might want to get fired because if you're the GM of the Yankees and you don't win a World Series, everyone's like, this guy's a clown. Right. And anything less than that, and you lose a lot. Like, you yeah. haven't won a World Series in a long time. So it seems like a thankless job. You usually don't give a, a, a big, like, media press conference outside what, what appears to be, like, I don't know, a strip of, uh, like, street side restaurants yes in front of the media screaming at everybody if you're very secure in your job yes yes all right so i i i uh i look forward to more cashman quotes if he's trying to get fired uh jake uh my hot seat's the new orleans pelicans uh zion williamson first overall pick superstar told the media he's quote trying his best to buy in right now mm. so that sounds very optimistic someone quote you didn't said uh he should try to buy an oxygen mask because he was breathing really heavy during that press conference and i laughed w would you consider uh zion williamson to be a superstar yes. no I, no i don't think i would no i don't think he's chance. played enough games yeah, he's to a, be a I superstar don't, i don't think he's a superstar. Way he's a superstar even though i might have just said superstar yeah he but he's not a superstar that, that's why i wanted to address it because yeah. i feel like <laughs> i feel like he is called a superstar a lot but i don't think that he is superstars play what other player has 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 torn through their shoe and affected a stock? He was a college superstar. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, he was definitely a college superstar. He won a championship, right? Uh, yeah, that team was loaded. Yeah, they were really good. And your cool throne? Uh, my cool throne's lucky underwear. Uh, during the Manning cast, Patrick Mahomes told the Mannings that he's worn the same pair of underwear for his entire NFL career, every game. That mm. was fucked up too. How he predicted that so perfectly. He knew that that that. Did you see the clip? He, the Eli Manning was like, uh, I think the Broncos were like first and goal on the ten. He's like, are they going to score a touchdown and how? And he's like, they're going to run, they're going to run, they're going to do a play action pass and, and score. Literally, exactly how it went down. Yeah, pretty sick. Also, to your point earlier, PFT, I'm going to say Eagles Chiefs Monday Night Football is going to be the highest rated game of the season moving Ooh. forward. Also, there's potential of Taylor appearing Ooh. in primetime standalone. Mm. It has to be. Super Bowl rematch, oh, Kelsey's. Yeah. And she's a Philly girl? I mean, it has to be the highest rated game of the year, right? Yeah. Ooh. Good call. Okay. Ratings of the year. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Let's get to our interviews. We've got two of them. Great ones. Carissa Thompson in studio and Bruce Bochy. Uh, it is brought to you by our friends at Body Armor. Time for our interview with Body Armor, and shout out to Body Armor. Body Armor helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world, packed with electrolytes and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor hydrates the best athletes in the world, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy Body Armor today. Visit the Body Armor Amazon store or retails, retailers nationwide, available in stores nationwide. Head on over to the Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, recurring guest, third time on. It is Carissa Thompson. You can see her on Thursday Night Football, Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that. I'm not in my prime, and this is the third time you, I've been on? You are in your prime. Yeah, the first time was when you came on. We got every single fact about your life wrong. Yeah, you did. You said you went to Washington State. Mm -hmm. We called Larry David. You didn't let us talk to Larry David. Second time was um, in your office in California with uh, EA. So it was you and Aaron were on the show. Great time. So this is number three. We're actually, back on our home turf. Again, factually wrong, though. I know okay. that this is your podcast, so I'm going to shut up and let you ask the questions. But you know the first time we all met, it wasn't your podcast yet. It was on the set of oh, Fox Sports Live spelling bee. before you guys had a dollar. And now I'm in this mm. bazillion dollar studio. 20, so yeah, congratulations. actually 20 bazillion dollars. I didn't want to put your business in the streets, but if you want to tell people again how rich you are, good yeah, for you. That, so bravo to you well, guys. And the first time you were on part of my take, I remember we were in three different locations. I was in like my New York apartment. I think Big Cat might have been Francisco. in San Francisco yeah. for some reason. You were in Hollywood Hills hobnobbing with the big shots. and As I normally do. I, I remember my washer and dryer was right behind me. <laughs> 
me because that was also my kitchen. Yeah, that's time. right. Yeah. You just reached in for clean laundry and your top ramen, but you guys have come a long way. We have. Wait, so I actually, it, I, I try to black out uh, the spelling bee because it was kind of embarrassing. Um, was that a low point for you in your career? No, that was a high point. We, no, went, we went opposite on. directions. We no. walked in. I remember it was so sad because we walked into Fox Sports and they, um, there was like a timed union like dinner, and everyone left. That's true. And we're like, who's gonna run the cameras? And they're like, we'll let one guy stay. The so it was like one guy, Carissa, me, Dave, and Hank standing there and being like, what are we doing? It was fantastic. So for those of you um, that were born, I don't know, recently, Fox Sports Live was the first program on FS1 when it became a cable entity, and we had no idea what we were doing. But I still reference that show regularly because the shit that we got away with was phenomenal. Yeah. Gary Payton openly referencing, like, I jerked off $30 million, and Andy <laughs> Roddick saying, what's the other hand for? Like, it is one of the greatest moments that no one saw on television. We had so much fun. It was Gary Payton, Donovan McNabb, Andy Roddick, Gabe Kapler yes. was on it as well. And the show didn't do as well as we wanted, but you guys were a highlight, and I just, I'm just very proud of how I, far I you come. I remember the whole time just being like, Chris probably is like, why? She's going to call her agent after this and be like, what did you just sign me up for? This is on crazy. The Contrary, I've okay. just watched from afar. You guys continue to succeed. Yeah. What would you say is the low point in your career? Oh God, low point in my career. Probably when I said play cock instead of play clock at a Minnesota <laughs> Gophers game when yeah. I was working for the Big Ten Network. Uh huh. Did you have? A, did... It was so cold outside, and I kept saying the word over and over again because I tried to correct it. And then at this point, I was like. Back to you, Tom. Like, after uh -huh. saying cock 10 times, I was like, I'm going to be fired. There's oh. no way I am going to continue in this industry. But, yeah, that was an, a highlight. Did they have a word with you after that? Were they like, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> no, they. I mean, they understood. You know, the minutes, like, call, it was outside. Right, yeah. Like, there wasn't a dome at the, yeah. go, the old Gophers game. Yeah. Uh, so they understood that I was freezing. But they were like, hey, maybe next time, like, if you get it the word wrong on accident, maybe don't keep saying it. A timer. I, I, I also, it. like, I, it's maybe because we've been around media for so long now and been doing this i my uh respect for sideline uh analysts and mm -hmm. and people who are they cutting to has grown exponentially because you guys get like no time and you have to nail it and it's like we're gonna go to you 20 seconds you got to get everything out all this information and i would i would do that i'd play say play clock cock every time there is a reason that i'm no longer a sideline reporter and it's i hard. say this to aaron andrews all the time i'm like you you prep all week long you have all these calls with players you have all these calls with coaches you have all this for 15 to 20 seconds and then half the time it's not even on camera right it's just like a report so i'm like the the amount the the roi on the amount of work that you put in versus what you actually see i give them so much respect and there's a reason that i don't do that yeah anymore yeah, either. yeah. And, i would just freeze every time they send it to me be like wait yeah. i'm on okay and they're like all right that's all the time's time up yeah <laughs> joe back yeah. to you the details with like how you hold the mic each reporter's got like a different grip on it do i go two fingers do I go three? Do I do the extended pinky? Like wow. which way you have to make sure that the mic flag is pointed directly at the camera. And there's a lot of red meat too because it's like a break in the action. So um, if you screw up anything, that's all anybody talks about for the next five minutes on Twitter. It's a big lo like. What's where's the upside? Like yeah. you're only gonna fail in that situation. Yeah, but I just talked to Mike Tomlin. He says that we need to go out in the second half and compete. I and I've said this before, so I haven't been fired for saying it, but I'll say it again. Um, I would make up the report sometimes because a the coach wouldn't come out at halftime or it was too late. And I was like, I didn't want to screw up the report. So I was like, I'm just going to make this up because, mm -hmm. first of all, no coach is going to get mad if I say, hey, we need to kill stop. Uh, hurting ourselves we needed to be better on third down we yep. need to stop turning the ball Pressure over the quarterback we need yeah exactly <laughs> and and do a better job of getting off the field like they're not going to correct me on that right. so i'm like it's fine i'll it just make up the report it would be very funny if you were like yeah so i just spoke with arthur smith at halftime and he said Bijan robinson blew smoke in his face yeah. and that's why he's not getting the ball yeah that would be funny if you, you know made what? up like an I would go back story. and do sidelines if I could make it up. Like, you know, oh, best be in show, like how funny that show was because of like the stuff that what's the actor? Um, what's the the guy's Chris Denzel yes. Washington. No, incorrect. Um, whoever the Tom Hanks actor is. No, that's incorrect. Yes. It Michael was McCann. OK. Anyways, the guy that plays uh, who's the actor, I think he passed away in best in show. And Chris Myers is like a spot on like version of him in yeah. the real. But the dog show doesn't let you have fun. No, yeah. that, that's the only reason I wouldn't want to do the show. Yeah, we got kicked out of the dog show. 
Well, I got, well we you also, guys have been kicked out of a lot of well, things. Well, we also I, faked the credential. I got arrested at the dog show. I didn't hear about that. Yeah, that, that was actually Who's the highlight of my career. That might be the low light of most Shut people. Shut up. Detained. But I got arrested and I was put into a holding cell. And no, you were not. And was I was like, like a dog kennel? Yeah. yeah, yeah. they basically put me downstairs like where the Great Danes were. They're like, stay in here. Um, the Department of Homeland Security started asking me questions. Because they thought that we had, well, we had fake credentials to get in. Phenomenal. But they thought that we were terrorists. I was like, I honestly. Well, that's not funny. I wanted to come in here and pet dogs. And that's it. And the funny thing was, oh it wasn't even really for content. No. We just wanted we to just hang out with dogs. showed up with fake credentials. I want to work here. <laughs> they were bad fake credentials. Wait, I, I think Amazon Prime for Thursday Night Football spice it up a little. We should have like two tr truths and a lie. Like that. Sideline reporter. Like, they're going to make up one and you guys have mm -hmm. to guess. I might do that in the post game show, depending yes. on how this game goes here on Thursday. So yeah, no so problem. We're, we're taping this before Bears Panthers. We probably run this next week, which but we got we you guys have Black Friday too. We Jets, do. Dolphins. Yep. Um, Bears Panthers. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, no, hey, look, it's the only game on. I always look at it like this. This is also why I've gambled in the past. Like I don't care about basketball game four in the NBA season, yeah. but I care if I put money on it. Right. right. So it's the only game on it's prime time. What else are you doing? So even if the teams maybe aren't as great as you want and the matchups, not ideal, it's still the NFL football. and it's football. It's yeah. also Thursday night football. I love it because it's like the unofficial kickoff to the weekend. You're the like, best. all right, here we go. Yeah. We have all the football ahead of us because I'm so dumb that like when Monday rolls around, I'm watching Monday night football. I'm like, Oh man, it's Another over three days till we yep. get football. Yeah. See, yeah. now we're being optimistic. Yeah. Guys. It's a beautiful. It's the night. father in you. Yeah. It's like kick off. We remember like, when you had no children. You're all grown up now. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm just a lot more tired. Um. All right. That's so right. Thursday night football mm -hmm. on Amazon Prime. It seems like you guys have an awesome time. The best. It seems like you guys have a really fun time. How has it been like in terms of play spot in your career, like getting to work with all these people? Because the the entire panel is just like characters. So. Shout out to Amazon for giving us the runway to be ourselves, right? I mean, you guys, I don't need to tell you, you've made a very good living off of being yourselves. And when a, an employer allows you that, it, same as Fo at Fox, like they've always let me be who I am, good, bad, or indifferent. And Am Amazon does the same thing. Fitz is ripping off his shirt, you know, in Buffalo. And Wit is carrying Kevin Hart off the set. Like there's just, they let us be us. And I think hopefully the viewer sees that it's authentic because- yeah. We aren't polished and we're not, I mean, there's a time and a place to be professional, but at the end of the day, it's football, it's fun, and yep. it's not that serious. So balancing information and entertainment is sort of the perfect 50-50 goal, and that's hopefully what we do every are, week. Are you yeah. allowed to cuss on the broadcast? Uh, are you allowed to? Uh, internet, I think it's right? frowned upon, but huh. uh, if it's, if it's, if a, you know, a four letter word slips out every now and then, I'm sure it's not the biggest deal but i don't think they encourage it it would okay. just be awesome if like especially for a game like this you were like welcome back to thursday night fucking football yeah you want this me to do it does that sound you should never dare good? me to do yeah. anything i know I'll, I'll try it once probably twice boy yeah. does this like game my marriage fucking suck yeah oh this that is... was a nice slip in there hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got jokes guys hey, but you got a new boyfriend i do i have a great boyfriend because i was a terrible scout like i should never be a gm i think i'm good at that like first rounders and they end up being total busts so I now don't pick my boyfriends and actually someone uh, else did. So what is it like dating Ryan Rossillo? Ryan Rossillo and I are finally together after all these years. <laughs> he is my brother and this is the kind of relationship we have. I know everyone. Yeah, I remember Van Pelt was always like, you and Rossillo should get together. I'm like, mm. he's like my brother. Yeah. You guys like, are going to end up I know together that... in the end. Do you have a pact where if you're both, <laughs> no, if really you're both 60 can't. and yeah, single, you make no. if, you're, listen, if you're both 60 and single, will you marry Ryan Rossillo? No, because he's like my brother, and I'm just not into marrying oh, my siblings. Friend zone yeah. so hard. No, it's oh. not a friend zone. He would feel the same way. He'd it's be my like, "There's buddy. no way I could marry my sister." <laughs> We're just like so. too close. I heard that so much in eighth grade. Yeah. We're just too close to friends. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Eighth grade, but yeah. sometimes no. I'm just kidding. Wait, so who picked your new boyfriend? <laughs> Matthew Stafford and Kelly. Oh, yeah. That's they a were good like, one. yeah, they were like, Carissa, you've dated some real losers and married some, so we're gonna pick your next <laughs> one. <laughs> And I just thought it was like a rebound. I was like, this is cool. Like, I'll date this guy. He's chill, easy going. And then actually, it's my longest relationship I've ever been in. So uh, a happy relationship. Love it. You know, we've had some real bad ones. But yeah. Well, we got to meet him to approve. You would approve. Yeah, maybe Super Bowl week we'll meet him. Yeah. We'll give him, you know, the ocular pat down. I'm going to get him hammered See and try to doing. have some tough conversations with him. Hard hitting questions. Yeah. A few truths and a lie. That's what you should have the game come Yeah, we're going to I'm going to get him hammered down. and be like, hey, I Rosillo was talking a lot of shit about you. You should probably step to him. 
Uh, yeah, get, get him hammered and just talk about how handsome. No, no, is. you guys, you know how much do you squat? Because yeah, Rosillo like, squats yeah. like four fifty. Ryan is fucking jacked. Yeah, we need you're to not. Get Rosillo, we need to get Rosillo out of the house. His house is almost as nice as your guys' studio. It's beautiful. Now, it's nice. Yeah, we went. Yeah. yeah, we went to it. So, this we guy's like rich the, too. What's yeah. going on? I still have seventy five jobs, and you guys have the best ones and are loaded. I actually think that Rosillo would be great in prison. He would love. Wow. It. <laughs> There's no, a headline. He would, think about it, because like he doesn't he doesn't really go outside that much. As long as, as long as prison had league pass. Yeah. Be yeah. yeah. And, and weights. Yeah. So uh, obviously prison has do. weights. So you just work out, eat, and then watch basketball all day. Tales from the prison yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's actually in prison right now, just in a $10 million house. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, house. that's He's cool. like Pablo Escobar. Uh, all right. So <laughs> I actually, I got a question for yeah. you. It's yeah. uh, We play this game with every guest that sits down. Oh, so I'm not special. Okay, got no, it. No, but I, it's like a recurring thing that you do. You know, you cool. guys have bits that you do on, on Thursday Night Football. Um, you have a gun. And there's one bullet in your gun, and you have to shoot somebody. Do you shoot Aaron Andrews, Ooh. or do you shoot Jeff Bezos? Ooh. Where am I shooting them? In the head. In the face. Whoa, Jesus. Yeah. In the face. Oh, my God. Kill you play shot. this with everyone? Back of everyone. We ask the same question to everyone. Execution everybody. style. Everyone always says Bezos, by the way. I would never kill Jeff. He signs my check. Okay, yeah, so, so that's- See you, Aaron. So bye. No, because she would know- no, I would never kill Aaron. I, this is hard. You have to answer this. Yeah, yeah, but if you if you don't shoot anybody or you try to shoot yourself, then everybody dies. Oh, yeah, I would shoot. I'd shoot myself. That's but then smart. you then we're all going both. down together. Aaron yeah, and Jeff. We're all. In, yeah, I'd That's rather beautiful. I'd rather take us all out than have to pick. Okay. Yeah, so That's it's beautiful. Marissa Thompson wants to murder Aaron myself, Andrews and Aaron Jeff. Bezos. And yes. Jeff. Okay, yes. and but we'll all be in heaven together be. in a really nice house. Who yeah, that's true. Who do you think that would actually suck? Because Jeff Bezos would definitely get like the first billing in that, right? Yeah, because oh, it yeah. would be his house. Yeah, yeah. Like Jeff Bezos dies, also present. Aaron Andrews. Your oh yeah, we're always the others. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Your podcast with Aaron though probably would go top of the charts. I'm well, fine. Then death it is. It's like when a musician what? dies and everyone just listens to all their music that week. There we go. Yeah, people should die more. Hold We've on. recorded episodes. This of is Parliament Al today. Michaels calling right oh, now. Oh, he didn't answer? let us talk to Larry David. Do you want to talk to Al? Yeah, oh, yeah, pick yeah. It up, pick it up, pick it up. Al, don't say anything. You're on speakerphone. Say hi to the uh, Pardon My Take guys. Hi, Al. Wait a minute. Are you on the air? I am, so say hi. To Pardon My Take? Yeah, say, oh my. say hello. Hey, hey gang, is this, is, is this a paid uh, appearance? Yeah, I don't do anything for free. I need money. You know yeah, that. We, we, Al, we offered you $300,000 to come on the podcast, <laughs> but you declined. Is this a paid, a paid appearance for me? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> oh, that yeah. is. You, you'll get a check. Carissa. Carissa has enough money. No, I don't. I have a lot of bills. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say goodbye before we both get fired. Aloha. By the way, you are Aloha. not coming back tomorrow, right? What, what are you doing? Where are you going tomorrow? Yeah, I'm coming back to LA. Oh, with me, right? Yeah, we're co all coming back together. You. You've already Kaylee. kicked me off the plane. Ah, it's a no, plane. No, 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 no. This no. Amin, but I'm, I'm, Amina's coming. Amina, Amina, you, me, Kaylee, and Jared. I'll go to LA. Right? Perfect. Oh wait. We got Eric and Dan, too. Yeah, yeah. Me. We'll go. We'll go. Well, look at that. We have a party. Yeah, yeah. We love you, Al. I'm going to L.A. anyway, so we'll catch up. It's a 24-hour party. I gotta, yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's, listen, it's my... listen, listen, everybody. Calm down. Oh, <laughs> this guy. He's good, everyone. He can, Al, can you just right. say real quick, the Bears are back? The Cal Bears? No, the Bears. <laughs> That's how we need to end this can conversation. I love you. I love you. The Bears are back. I'll see you. I've got nothing better than that. Aloha. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I was so close to getting He the said the back. cow bears? Uh, cow bears. Uh, Jake, Jake Marsh's jaw was yeah, on the floor of that entire phone call. with Al Michaels. So, so I'm a big Al Michaels so fan. So, so, so am I. And yeah. this is how sweet Al is, probably because he feels bad for all of us peasants. He lets us fly back with him. On it's a little his, PJ talk. On his, That's yeah, it. yeah. It's a little PJ talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big time PFC when I'm calling uh, good game so one day, you guys are on my PJ. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're going to be on his PJ. Herbie gets a PJ too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I saw a tweet from Herbie yesterday. Uh, he does travel a lot. He's got his dog with him on the plane now. Yes. And he said that his dog just got certified as an emotional support animal. That feels like a fake emotional support animal to me. It feels like he just also, wanted his dog to be able to you don't have to do that for a PJ. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm definitely not, don't. I'm not going to question the authenticity of, of, of Ben because Ben can do no that's wrong. That's the dog's name? Yeah. I'm pro Ben. But yeah. 
what I'd like to, because I'm going to turn this around and open this discussion up for the fake pre-boarders. Those are the people I want credentials on. Yeah. You got to show me the handicap. I'm all for you having to get on the plane early, but you look like you're walking fine. Yeah. You look just, you're, you're talking to me right I now. I walk. I slip in. You're that guy. Yeah, I slip in. You're the guy that like, oh, I've got kids. I got to get on early. No, I don't say anything. You just slip in. With all your children, or no, just by yourself? myself. You're a by fake myself. pre-boarder. Yeah, who are these people? Piquet's always been like a if group three is called, and he's group like way back in the day. If he's group not, five, oh yeah, this one's just, not group three. They don't he's, say he just anything. goes up with he goes they don't up say with group anything. three. No, the best is the group sevens that are hovering around the entrance. Yeah, I don't know. I'm the asshole it, that's yeah. got to be like, hey, what group are you? And they're like seven, and I'm like, oh, sorry, can I get by? And then it's like, oh, I'm an asshole because I'm in first class. Mm -hmm. I've been in 32B most of my life. You got damn right. I'm moonwalking into first mm -hmm. class I, at this point. I'd never hover. It's literally just as soon as they start boarding the very first person, I'm like, all right, let's You're a go. fake pre boarder. You know what? No, I like it's not. You, I'm and sitting now, first class. How so long have like, I known you? Ten years. You're now that guy. Easy. I, I have no problem with it. They never say anything. It's a hack in the system. Yeah, because then we're not supposed to question if you actually have a handicap. Question all the rules. Steve Jobs taught me that. Oh, God. I don't know if Steve Jobs said that. One time I had a guitar and they told me you can get on with the pre-board. And I did. I started Why? Because you have an yeah. instrument? Yeah, they said, a handicap. they said, sir, you have a guitar. You obviously That's need that to function in society. Mm -hmm. You're a weird guy. So um, I went up to the front and then a line behind me formed. And I was the first person pre-board. Everybody behind me was a veteran. Oh. And and Dude, I had to go in front of veterans. Yeah. Well, no, they they got behind me, and then I w and they looked at me. I was like, I got the guitar. They have no. like, they have like Vietnam hats on, and yeah. I'm like, it's a Gibson. You're an asshole. <laughs> they you told are me a to. fake pre -board I don't go in front, in front of veterans. Of veterans. They told no, me to. I don't go in front. The, the flight attendant not. told me to. I don't go in front of veterans. If they say boarding group one is boarding, and I'm group two, I will get in the back of group one. They're gonna get to two. I know how numbers work. You are everything wrong with this system. No, not at all. With society. Not at with all. With society. With life. Yeah. Yeah, let's just... With, with your generation. I like yeah. when people do that. We're going to get back to Carissa Thompson in a second. She's being brought to you by Chevy. I am a Chevy driver. I own a Chevy. I purchased a Chevy with my own money because I believe in Chevy. I believe in their cars and their trucks. And there's a new family with unstoppable grit and determination. They are the official partners of the part of my take family. That is the Chevy Silverado family. That's the ZR2. The ZR2 has just joined the Silverado family. This thing is awesome. It's the first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2. It joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you. It's got the exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, up to 14 available camera views. This thing is awesome. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2 are a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head over to Chevy.com, check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks of Part of My Take. And now, here's more Carissa Thompson. Uh, wait, so I want to go back because you, you said that, so Matthew Stafford and Kelly hooked you up, but you also kind of hooked up Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. No, I can't take, we can't take credit for that. No, take credit. I, no, do it because we want a clip and we'll just. Oh, for, for social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Travis was very sweet and he said, I owe you guys big time. Now, this is that how this Sounds whole like deal it. played out was Aaron and I have known Travis, you know, forever. And he's been so great to us. He bought Aaron a baby present when she had Mac. Like that's. That that's kind. the line of. A, a demarcation of, of a being a good guy? Yeah, when I, I didn't buy you a baby gift, I'm you a bad You think O.J. Person. Simpson ever bought a baby present? Probably. Let's not. Why are we going to? That's where you go? You well, go, O.J., you're like, just that's, throwing. That's hey, a by very the way, loose line. There's a I lot more to life than, than buying somebody. Yeah, present. being like, he's a great guy. He bought a baby present. You are Travis Kelsey. You don't even, he doesn't even have to know that Aaron had a baby, but he took the time, but got a baby is, present. But this is pre-Taylor yeah, Travis. Some are saying, that's not true. How do we know that? What was the date they got together? Some are saying that Travis knew that if he did this that you would go on a podcast and yeah because like, it really matters what guy. i say mm -hmm. all right travis is a great guy we Baby wanted president. him yeah. to be with someone great we love taylor swift so the whole story you know he was telling it on his podcast to his brother about how he had made the friendship bracelet with his phone number on it he couldn't give it to her okay we all know that and we were like you have to give taylor like give travis a try this was like months before they ended up getting together so in sort of a tongue-in-cheek way, I think he was like, I owe you guys big time. We had okay. nothing to do with it, but we will gladly take credit for things we did not do. Okay, can you hook maybe Hank up with somebody? Yeah. He's always singing Sexy Red. 
Okay, so what? He's always like my booty hole brown. He says it all the time. Right. So do you think maybe you could put the word out to sexy red, like Hank Lockwood single, ready to mingle? Sure. Or ice spice. What? Uh, what? I don't know Ice Spice. Yeah, Taylor I knows know, Ice Spice. Know Didn't she introduce her at SNL it. or something? I don't know. I'm happy to play matchmaker. I love love, even if I've been terrible at it in the past. Who <laughs> do you think Hank would be cute with? I, well, well, it's his type. Everything. Every, everything. Oh, wow. That narrows it down. Big, down. small, tall, short. I like that. Equal opportunity. Uh -huh. He loves big uh -huh. women. I know that. Great. Yeah. yeah. Who <laughs> has been your favorite guest? Favorite guest of all time. Um, I'll ask the questions around here. Well, we have we have like we our consistent crew of like recurring guests that we love, and there's like you know Rosillo's in there, yeah. Dak Prescott, Scott Van Pelt, Blake Bortles, Blake Griffin. Okay. So you can't pick a favorite. Who's Brooks your favorite Kepka. kid? Let's do the Dion. Who's My your favorite daughter. kid? Easy. Perfect. Okay. No well, because it's your only girl. Well, yeah, and everyone always asks me that, like they're getting a trump card, and I just am like my daughter. Yeah, I would say. Oh, well, she's kind of like I have a favorite right dog. Now. I love both my dogs, but Willis is my favorite because he's the OG and he's been there the longest. So, oh, uh, what's your other dog's name? Daisy. He knows. She knows. Yeah, he. She, she. knows. Yeah, is she? Yeah, it's a she. Well, Dude. I felt bad because I bought Willis and I was like, I'm a dick. I need to adopt a dog because I believe that all dogs, hence the proceeds for Ruby Ranch, uh, are going to the dog rescue that I'm going to start on the ranch. Because I was like, oh, I need to adopt a dog. And she's the sweetest dog in the world. And then the dog that I bought is a dick, but I love him because he like mm -hmm. knows that I bought him. Yeah. And he's like, I'm rich and yeah. you're mm -hmm. poor. Yeah, yeah, Daisy. right. Wait, so the ranch, we got to get some Stell Blue coffee there because I have a coffee. Yes, I would love helps that. dogs, but- Tell us about the ranch. You bought a ranch. Yes, uh, because I watched Yellowstone. I was that chick that was like, oh, now I want a ranch. <laughs> so I looked for a long time. I found this awesome property, and I'm renovating it currently, and then I'm going to just bring all the dogs that I can onto the ranch. I have cattle there right now. I have a that pig. Rules. I've got a horse. And I'm just going to turn into a big animal rescue because I'm a shitty person in a lot of ways. But this is like my good deed. This is my, you know, my deposit back into life. That's so you be the happiest place on earth. It yeah. really like, is. Like, you know, I called it Ruby Ranch because it is. There's no place like home. And it's my version of Disneyland. It's that's, just animals running free. And like my, you know. my vision of retirement is just having a kind of a, a ranch or a farm with a whole bunch of animals yeah. and just hanging out on my porch. Just throwing a ball. Okay, then come to Ruby Ranch. Yeah. Me, you, Rosillo, yeah, you're welcome to come for uh, the I'll kids. Come, they'll, come. Love the, they'll love the animals. Bunch of, bunch of chickens. They have fresh eggs in the morning. It's awesome. It's like the best. Like, look, at this point, it, professionally and like personally, we've, we've done a bunch of different stuff. We've been, when I used to work in entertainment, you're like, okay, you go to the Oscars, you go do Super Bowls. Like, you've done all these things. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like as I get older, I want to do less and less and less and like go to the middle of nowhere and talk to no one. So, you, have, have you been able to do less? Like, this is, I, I actually am very curious about, we talk about it every now and then, allude to it. Like, someday we won't. Someday everything ends. I look at it like this. As long as I have opportunities to stay employed, I want to stay employed as long as I can because I love my job. Like It doesn't feel like work, right? I'm sure yeah. you guys feel exactly the same way. So uh, hence why I'm very fortunate that Fox lets me also work at Amazon. Amazon lets me work at Fox. I get to do the podcast. I started an interior design company during COVID. Um, I just like to do a lot of things if the opportunities are there, but I also know that those will go away one day. Yeah. So then at that point, I'll just disappear on the ranch. And it will, I, I always think about it like this. Like if you're on the bowl, stay on until that thing bucks you yeah. and then be like, peace. As That's a great people, setup. As long as people are, are still giving you money to do an insane job that you love. Yeah. Why would I be dumb like, to leave? 100%. And then at the end of the day, you're like, I'm just going to go hang out with the animals now. See you. Bye, right. humans. That's a great, you, you've set it up perfectly. But this is why I have so much respect for people like Barry Sanders or an Andrew Luck who like walked away yeah. from a game where they could make so much money, especially, you know, nowadays with Andrew Luck, you know, more recent. I know the paychecks weren't the same for Barry back in the day, but like the guys that walk away from that, and I know it's not just about money, mm -hmm. but for me right now, it is like paying bills and like that, stockpiling cash and then disappearing. Yeah, that's the problem for us. Like we'll never stop doing this because if we said we're going to retire tomorrow, like Sunday I'd text PFT and be like, you want to watch some football? If like, I had told you guys together. like 10 years ago when you're on the set what, during the union break, yeah. the best union line ever was one of the guys goes, they're like, okay, five minute break. He goes, you can't take a five minute break in six minutes. And I was like, that's the union yep, that's right the there union. in a nutshell. But if I would have told you guys 10 years ago while you were sitting there not spelling the words correctly that no. you would be here, you wouldn't probably have believed it. No, it's been a dream. Why have you guys been so successful, do you think? So, um, I mean, there's a lot to that. A lot of it does have to do with timing. I would say luck, yeah. A lot, a lot of it of has to do with timing because we started a podcast before everybody had a podcast. Yeah. 
There were some. Is that a shot at Aaron and I? Yep. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah um, it was a shot at you. <laughs> Calm the fuck down. <laughs> Again, I love Aaron. She's the best. Um, but yeah, like everybody has a podcast now. Yeah. And not there wasn't that much competition to like mainstream sports talk radio, mainstream you know television that you watch in the mornings. So we kind of were in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I think we tapped into a way of watching sports that a lot of people really missed, which was they're supposed to be fun and you're supposed to be able to make jokes. And you're not supposed to take it too seriously. And it, I, I think also when we started, our production value was like nothing, mm-hmm. right? And so people liked that. It was refreshing yeah, because you don't want to watch people talk about sports wearing a suit in a studio, being super professional. It's like that's not how people talk about the game. But that's also what I like about Amazon and even Fox too where it's like, yeah, it's, it's a, a little bit more professional at Fox just because like they are in a studio but you don't have to wear a tie and for Amazon like it's just Fitz is wearing a Hawaiian shirt like right. you know just being authentically yourself is cool too but- yeah and the great thing with like Terry and Jimmy is you can put them in a suit but that doesn't mean that they're going to yeah, be yeah, active, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. buttoned up and stuff but how have you guys navigated in the cancel culture that we live in like how do you feel like you've been able to sort of dodge these landmines that exist that you're I, I feel like this, like people are waiting for you to mess up. Yeah. Going back to the aforementioned like sideline thing, like you do one thing wrong and it's like, it doesn't, I know this all too well, like things don't leave the internet and like really bad shit's happened to me. And it's like, people can still see that. And like, yeah. I was a victim of something really shitty, but right. like people still take shots. Like it's my fault that like my phone got hacked. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. there's all these landmines out there that you kind of have to navigate. And how have you guys done that? with success and not been canceled i i think it honestly and and people will they, we've heard, we've said this many times before and people are like oh you guys are just saying this to say this but getting canceled on espn was the best thing to happen to us because you guys know my thoughts on all that yeah we started at this like you know progression where we started the show it got really big way bigger than we thought very fast and then it was like all right what's the next step oh we got to get a tv show then that all comes crumbling down and as disappointed as we were in the moment we both, and Hank included, had the epiphany of, like, our audience will go yeah. anywhere for us. Yeah. Our audience- They're coming for you guys. Right. They will yeah. be here for us. We don't need to go to some other platform. We don't need to take this step up in, like, you know, being on TV or doing something else. We can do what we want to do in our world, and our audience will back us. And so I think having that, like, we, we almost have, like, this little island that we can't be touched. Obviously, there's things that could touch us. Not saying that, like, you know, anyone... No, of course. Canceled, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think we've put up so many years of, of content that people have enjoyed, and they've been with us for so long that... We, we know we know what we have and we're happy with it and we don't have to try to look for the next best thing. Well, that's where you always go. You know, the guys over at Fox have been together for 30 years. You can consume sports anywhere now, right? Your phone, watch a show, don't watch a show, listen to the podcast, but you are coming for the people and investing right. in people. And even we had Dan Patrick on our podcast and just those were the heydays of ESPN because it was about the Bermans. It was about the, you know, Rich Eisen. It was about the individuals and the sports were secondary. And like that shift, is now it's like and that's you know everyone has like a changing of the guards with whatever they're doing and I don't know what's going on over there because I don't work there anymore but I love people right that's even for me like with sports teams like yes I have fandom being from Seattle and I root for Seattle teams but like I still root for individuals if they go somewhere else right right And, and it really does come down to like there's something very uh, freeing about realizing that what you have is awesome mm-hmm. and not saying, oh, I need the next thing and the grass is greener and that stuff. Like, saying- Except in relationships, I'm always looking for yeah. the next best thing. I'm kidding. Yeah. Steve, I love you. Yeah, Steve, we love you. Uh, oh, that's remaining to be seen. That's a cute name for Ryan. Just call Steve? Him Steve. Yeah. You guys really want me to be together with Ryan? We'll no. have a fake wedding. No, it's fine. Like, like when people's dogs get married to each other, you're going to do a fake wedding with, with Rosilla? Oh, I, wish, I wish some of my weddings were fake, you know? <laughs> Would have saved me a lot of money. Uh, when you say some of my weddings, that's always I know. a good sign. Hey, look, guys, you know, in life, you have to own who you are. Yeah. Th- there's uh, many chapters to my story, and I'm, <laughs> I'm good with all of them. Yes. Yeah. Um, does any any fan base hate you? Oh, I'm sure. Is there one that you like? You mean like a, like a city? Or yeah, like a yeah, city. Yeah, like you hear from. I don't know. I mean, maybe now. I don't know. I don't think that there's one. I haven't. We can find one for you. We can oh, I'm get sure. One. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about it. What yeah. do you think about Dak Prescott? Oh, I have no problem with Dak Prescott. I think oh. he's in an unenviable position, but also a great position. If you're the quarterback for America's team, it comes the good comes with the bad. I don't. I don't ever feel sorry for people that are in positions that are 
enviable. What do you think about the Bills? I love the Bills. I, having, like, when we went there last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, phenomenal. Like, what a great fucking city. Hmm. Why? You're, you're looking I'm for fishing. me? I'm fishing. I'm, I'm on a fishing No, I, I'm, I don't think there's a fan base that's, like, I have a target on my back. I'm sure that there's a lot of individuals that think I'm annoying, but I don't do you, give a shit. Do you, like, read your comments? No, I stopped doing that after the bad thing happened to me because smart. it was only going to be whatever. Smart. But I, I think I told you guys this really early on in my career. Uh, I always put that in quotes because I always feel like a dick being like my career. Yeah. Um, Deadspin, you guys weren't born yet, Yeah. wrote an article and said, because I dyed my hair I remember black. This. I remember I this. Yes. Right? I, we Fuck talked about them. this. I didn't want to be a Barbie on the sidelines. Now I'm like, oh God, I'd love to be a Barbie on the sidelines. I'm going back. The uh, I dyed my hair dark and they wrote, that Carissa Thompson's on a suicidal path to Frumpyville. And yeah. I cried and I was like, oh my God, that's so mean. And then after that, I was like, well, who cares? And, and then I, they became the judges of everyone. Isn't that funny how it works? It, bored. Yeah, I, the I think- The people who judge the most- have stuff where in the past where they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I've changed as a person. Yeah, I mean, like growing up, my mom was like, you don't like everyone. Why would you think that everyone likes you? I just think that's that a good lesson. Really early on, it was about if I'm going to get into this industry, be prepared for negative comments. Someone's not going to like the way you look, or like, uh, not like your hair, or not like what you're wearing. Like, who cares? As long as I stay employed and the people I work with and the people I work for mm-hmm. are good with me, then I don't really care what Joe in the basement thinks that's, that's smart it, though it's hard to get to that point i struggled with it did you yeah of course really? when you start and you read you know especially when it's early internet and like it feels like you know we, we would blog and it'd be like 20 comments every blog so yeah you, you could read them all and yeah you you definitely see it and you like it you you see 19 positive comments one negative of and that's course the only one that sticks with you and then you got to slowly get to a point where it's like listen there's going to be people who hate me it was right that when is what it is. twitter came out and i didn't know how the search button on it worked so i put in carissa thompson oh no mm. never did and it, it you guys no 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 i tweeted out my name oh, because i awesome. didn't know how it worked <laughs> and so then i came back and everyone's like cool is that how you yeah. spell your name and i was like fuck that's embarrassing i was like looking up what oh, people were saying oh. about me and it was a tweet and so then that was like really early on it must have, when did twitter come out like 2004 or something it was like nine yeah nine yeah so it was right then and then after everything bad that happened to me i was like i'm not looking at any of this crap anymore but yeah i just and i i don't say this arrogantly i just am very comfortable with you know that's why i self-deprecate about whether it's the marriage stuff or like if i have this zit on my face or what i don't really care anymore and not yeah. in a bad way i just think i'm like at a point i'm sure you guys are there too where you're comfortable with who you are and that's very liberating it's very liberating i saw yeah. that zit i was like she's so brave yeah i yeah, know I'm, i am i'm a hero just yeah. like us yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. stars they're just like us they're yeah. grocery shopping the biggest complaint that, that we get which i actually agree with now is that the cameras that we have are too high down. oh it's gross like oh me, me, and, me and big cat are not this face right here i couldn't agree Meant, more. This face is meant for radio, and my yes. my voice is meant for oh, Allegra. How many chins am I getting yes. over here? It's bad. You guys, I'm not interested in seeing 4K, 12K. Like, no. back up, blur the photo, give me some film. Like the best pictures that we have. Yes. Think about like when we looked at our parents, you know, photo albums. They look incredible. I know because it's blurry. It's basically a filter now. Yep. Is like what photographs were back in the day. I it, do not want and back the camera up. Yes. Why are we so and close? Unlike you, who you probably. Probably have a great team uh, at Fox and Amazon. Our team loves to just like if we take a bad picture, that's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. they're like, look wait, at this. no, you know who does that? Articles do that. Why do they pull like a random Getty know, image when I you're know. like mid conversation? Or again, like anything. I took one picture at a Fanatics party like five years ago. <laughs> and you can't so fat, and everyone uses it. And you're gonna use it right. You're like, <laughs> yeah. dude, I don't look like that anymore. I know. I had this one. No, I look fatter, but yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> I had a uh, wearing like it was like my first headshot when I worked for the Colorado Rockies, and I was in this brown suit, and I saved up all my money and bought it at Express, and I thought I was like killing it. That I couldn't get rid of that stupid picture mm-hmm. for like. 20 oh, years so our guys go worse they actually take pictures of us and then they go in and they photoshop them to make even us worse look even worse <laughs> yeah, no, they do they'll These make people no, work for you yes dead serious they will fire make, them they will make us fatter yeah no. they, they will put our like, eyes bags under our eyes yeah. the best though and especially like now in like the filter days or you know editing photos or something and someone's like oh you look great there i'm like yeah because that's not what i look like right and i don't care i don't want to know what i look like anymore uh, when your phone's like face not recognized i'm like perfect oh like, yeah some shit's changed although i did i was doing way too much Botox for a while and then I was like I look like a cat like we need to stop with yeah. this and bring it down a notch my mom goes what are we doing here like that's the thing where you like realize you're like 
Yeah. So it's also funny when people just don't understand how age works. They'll like see a picture of me from seven years ago. They'll be like, damn, what happened? I'm like, seven <laughs> years, dude. What do you mean what happened? Like seven I'm, years. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, I have three children, seven yeah. years, and I'm really rich. My favorite Colin Coward line was someone said to him, they were like, how do you sleep at night with the things you say? And he's like, next to a really hot redhead on a bed full of money. And it's like, <laughs> coward, I'm good. Yeah, like, that's, I, that's, that's how I sleep. That's a coward thing to say. Um, all right, well, I know you are pressed for time. This has been awesome. No, I'm not. I have nothing to oh, do. Oh, okay, so you yeah. can stay forever. <laughs> Perfect. You do the whole show with us. Uh, no, I will get out of here. I love you guys. I'm you so coming. proud of you. I really am. Like, on my, our way over here with Fitz and Wit, I know you're going to talk to him next, but I was just saying, I'm uh, good for you guys. Appreciate it. Proud of you too. And you've yeah. done it your way. So yes. it's good for you guys. It's always nice having friends on who like we've known for a very long time and just seeing it. It's just great. It's yeah. Fun. I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, and I will take some of that coffee. That's awesome. That yes. You that yes. You get pup. some of the coffee. I have one last question. Rowback yeah. question. RHOBACK.com. Promo code take 20% off your first purchase. RHOBACK.com. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Rowback.com. Promo code take. Um, what night are we going to go out Super Bowl week in Vegas? All of them. No, I can't because, do all of them. I only can do one. So we don't have the game this year. So Fox has it two of the three years. So we had it last year and we'll have it next year. So mm-hmm. this is sort of my free year because I don't actually have to do the okay. broadcast. So I'm down for Maybe all of them. Wednesday yeah. night? Uh, yeah, we'll Wednesday, figure it out. Wednesday is usually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Thursday too. Maybe Thursday. Get a pack of heaters, smoke up Johnny, yeah. real banner. You're at the Bender household. It's just, yeah. it, I Breakfast can't do, one. Vegas yeah. is going to kill me. Actually, New Orleans is going to kill me next year. Yeah, I got to be more disciplined on that one. I we went to the Final Four in New Orleans a few years ago. The last day we were in there, we were there for like six days. I'm not joking. I took a walk. I just walked for seven miles away from the hotel and then seven miles back because I was so bloated and felt so crappy. Wait, you get in more trouble in uh, New Orleans than you do in Vegas? Uh, yeah, because the food. Yeah, the, dr- uh, the drinks too, food. the hand grenades, and then just- The hurricane. You just you have can, side of smoke, gumbo with everything. Yeah, you can smoke cigs inside yeah. in uh, New Orleans. It's crazy. Wait, I'm going to- Because Wit's coming in here. Wit, of course, being from Louisiana, when we were down there, he ate so- so much because he went out with David Chang's on our show as well. Who I don't incredible, you know, Michelin chef and mm-hmm. has done more in his life than I'll ever do. But him and Wit went out and they ate at every place in it's, town. It just like, becomes I feel normal. So sick. I would start every day, and be like, oh yeah, why why wouldn't I have five beignets with my coffee? You look great. No, I don't, but that's okay. Uh, Carissa, you're the best. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for and by the way, next podcast we're doing the fourth one or fifth one depending mm-hmm. on how we're counting this thing we'll do it at the ranch yes yeah i'm in i'm not in. kidding i'll get your ass up on my horse we'll chase some you know steer around and I have a time a i horse. like it i like it I so much go on a horse i'll just I've, pet the dogs i've I'll been pet. on a horse one time on the ground. Did not love it. feet well. on the ground i'm gonna stay on the, the horse do not get along. Yes. all right bye guys you, love you Carissa Thompson was brought to you by Part of My Cheese Steak. Yep, Part of My Cheese Steak just unleashed a menu that will have your mouth watering in no time. You can check out the Part of My Africa Bowl, sponsored by Part of My Cheese Steak. The videos from that are going to be coming out shortly with Donnie and Billy over in Uganda, watching them show down against Kenya. I think Billy gets into the game. He coaches. Donnie coaches. It's going to be electric. Great video. We brought Part of My Cheese Steak over to Uganda. Hold on to your taste receptors because we're introducing the new stars of the show. It's the chicken bacon ranch cheese steak. It is so good. They got chicken tenders. They are so delicious, scrumptious, mouth-watering, tasty. We had the chicken bacon ranch cheese steak before it came out. Blew our minds. Whether you're a cheesesteak aficionado, a finger food enthusiast, or simply someone who values the art of comfort cuisine, this menu has something for everyone, including the monumental Big Cat Combo. Order now on partofmycheesesteak.com. Also available on Uber Eats. And now, here's Bruce Bochy. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is the manager of the Texas Rangers who just won the World Series, his fourth World Series. Some are saying maybe the greatest manager in MLB history. We can maybe have that debate. It is Bruce Bochy. Uh, I want to start by saying uh, we just we just heard you talking to someone from your team, IT team. They called you Skip. Can we call you Skip? Please, please. Yeah, okay. that works for me. Okay, great. All right, well, Skip. How's it, uh, you know, the dust is settled. You have it a couple weeks, four, fourth World Series. Where does this rank? How are you feeling like in terms of, oh, my gosh, we just did that. Like, no one expected us to win this thing, and we just won a World Series by winning every game on the road. Yeah, well, I'll first uh, begin with, uh, I mean, it was a hell of a ride, especially what these guys end up doing, you know, winning 11 consecutive games on the road against the teams that we had to play. So, 
you know, they're all special and they're special in their own way. But this one, uh, you know, we, we did deal with a lot. And for this to happen, uh, it really hasn't sunk in, to be honest. It happened so fast and you have the parade and, and I just drove to Nashville. It's about a 10 hour drive from uh, Dallas. So I, I'm being humbled here right now. I, I got my wife telling me take the trash out and I got grandkids on me. So, uh, uh, right now I'm just uh, chilling, relaxing. Uh, but at some point this winter, I'm sure I'll reflect and, uh, just think how blessed I am for, for this to happen, especially the first year. There's so many people to thank for this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Skip. Um, question about, about coming back to major league baseball. So you were in Nashville, you were enjoying life. Like you said, your grandchildren, hanging out, thought you were retired. You get a call to come back and, and manage again. Um, now, you you were only out for a few years, but was there anything that changed about Major League Baseball and about managing in those short years that you were out that took you uh, a couple weeks, maybe a month or two, get used to uh, a, a new way of doing things? Well, I, I'll say this again. Yeah, it changed uh, quite a bit. I think you look at the rules. Um, this was the first time I had to deal with the three batter minimum. You know, initially I wasn't a big fan of it, but it's something you get used to. Um, I always tried to, I guess, get the best matchup I can, I could. And uh, so when you have a, a three batter pocket there, then, you, you know, the strategy is a little bit different. But the biggest is the clock, no question about it. And I, I think it has really worked out well. I love it personally. Uh, keeps the game moving, action. They took the shift away. Uh, so I think it's a better game, no doubt about it. Uh, they're shorter, they're crisper. Uh, it allows you to play your guys more. They they don't need the days off like they used to. There was times when games would be over four, four and a half hours. And, you know, nobody wants to see that, you know, when the game's dragging along. So I think it's been good for everybody. So I say that's the big, uh, biggest difference. Now, as far as the players and everything, uh, you know, there's some things that, that just won't change. Uh, we, our guys, uh, I mean, they're, Great players, they're competitive. Uh, uh, you know that that part will never change. Uh, the fundamentals, uh, you know, that's never going to change in our game. So you still have to do that. And they sure they talk about analytics, and you know that was part of the game when I first started managing. And I'll go back to 1995. Now, granted, I was using color pencils and charting out where they hit the ball and everything, <laughs> so it's a little bit different now. But uh, and so it really hasn't changed as much, except for the better, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I, I have a question about this run because it was an incredible run. Like I mentioned off the top, won every road game uh, out there. The I'm dumb. OK, so Jose Altuve hits that home run against you guys in game five. I was like, the Rangers are dead. Dead man walking. No chance to go back to Houston and win both these games. What did you say to the guys or, or was there a speech or was it just I trust these guys. I know that we're not dead because from the outside looking in, it's like you can't come back from that where you, you're about to take a 3-2 lead and now you have to win two games in Houston. I'll be honest. I, I didn't say anything. I didn't want to say anything because I, I didn't want to be different than all the other times that we took a, a gut punch. Uh, uh, I mean, these guys just kept getting up all year. And you talk about the injuries, every team deals with them. But, you know, with the Grom and guys going down, they just uh, kept focusing forward. But, you know, I'll go back to Seattle when uh, we lost that last game there. If we won one more game there, we win our division. We go home. We have five days off. But now we got to go to Tampa and, and uh, beat those guys in their home ballpark. And didn't phase these guys. Uh, they went to Baltimore. Didn't phase them. Uh, so I, I really uh, thought the best thing uh, for this club right now, hey, just keep doing what we're doing. That's bounce back. I mean, they kept getting up after getting knocked down so many times. And it, it was a, I mean, it's strange series, obviously, with, you know, both teams winning all road games. Uh, uh, but this, you know, these guys did it all year. And it's because we had men on the team and they were able to handle it. I love it. Yeah. Dogs. Just we had a bunch men. Of dogs. We had a bunch of dudes on the team. Yeah. When, when they sold you to come back to uh, and uh, manage the Rangers, um, I imagine that there were some conversations about the plan that was in place to be competitive. I don't know if that plan included uh, winning a World Series in year one. That probably would have been a, a lofty and ambitious goal for you. But what? How, how quickly did you expect to compete? I'll be honest. When I was talking to Chris Young, our general manager, and he was talking about his vision, 
And our owner, Ray Davis, is talking about his commitment. He was going to go out and get some starting pitching uh, like Chris wanted, and he, he was going to give us the, the tools that we needed. Uh, I, I really had a good feeling about this club. Now I go to spring training, and I, I as you mentioned, uh, we had dudes out there. Well, oh, my goodness, this, this is a talented ball club with a really good pitching staff. And that just sent a sense of confidence all over these guys. So, now, to say we're going to win the World Series, I, you know, that's that's hard to say, but I really thought that we would have a shot at it by getting to the postseason. I really felt this club doesn't get to the postseason. I, I'm going to be shocked, and that's how good I thought they were. So um, I, I just looked at, you know, what they had in place. When you have a senior and Simeon up the middle, Jonah Heim coming into his own, uh, Garcia, I mean, I mean, what a dude this guy is. And then you look at the young guys, Tavares and Young, they, they, they just was loaded with talent. So I wasn't surprised that we got there. Yeah, so uh, one guy I wanted to ask about specifically, Nathan Avaldi, who it feels like he doesn't get enough credit for just being that, like, big hoss that you can throw out there in, in, a, in a series and be like, he will shut them down, he will give us innings. He did it, obviously, with the Red Sox. He did it again with the Rangers. But, like, he never gets talked about that way. What is it when, – when he's out on, there, are, are you at a certain level of calm? Like, I just know he's going to go out and shove. Like, that's just he's – got, he's got those, like – he, he's just he's just nails like big moments he is there for right and i think they will talk about him now that you know part of our game you gotta have talent but it's performing under pressure and we couldn't have had a better guy out there on the mound needing to win one more game i, I compare him to you know, a guy we had in 2014 madison Bob Carter. yes you know certain players are you know those guys they just get better in the moment in the big moment i'm talking about so uh, we had all the confidence uh, with him. And you look at the game that he pitched. Um, I mean, he was in trouble. It seemed like every inning, first four innings. But, uh, you know, he just has the calmness and confidence about him. And uh, he just he, he just nails it for you out there. So uh, he just is a guy that I think is going to go down as one of the greatest postseason uh, performers when you look at what he's done. And you can talk about that game he had in L.A. That, that was amazing. But... You know, a game like that, I think, does so much for a player. It's like, hey, I've done it. I can do it again. But he just has that maniacal focus you love every game. Yeah. But in that postseason, he ramps it up even more. I, I love it. Those are the type of players you just love watching because, like, it doesn't matter what their regular season is. You know when the postseason comes along, they're going to have it. Bumgarner's a great, you know, he was th – that stretch that he had with you guys in the Giants – it felt like he was the most automatic thing, and it was just something nasty about it. Whereas, like when he's on the mound, he takes it personally, and he's just never going to get off the mound. He's going to get outs, and that's what he's going to do for his team. You know, I had a great seat watching it, and uh, it did, they are there. You appreciate, you know, not just their talent, but you know the makeup of these guys because uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stake, the pressure, and uh, these guys thrive on it. They're better. And that's what separates them from the average player. So we were uh, lucky when we signed Nate. I knew that. Uh, and getting to know him, I mean, what a great teammate, too. Uh, you know, you hear that a lot, but he's off the chart with that. And uh, he's always pulling for the guys. But he's the guy that, you know, he wants it. He wants the ball out there. Uh, you know, not just to win, but he, he's doing it. He has a cause I'm talking about. He wants to do it for his teammates. And so we, we were lucky to have him healthy because we lost him for a while. And we were a different team without him. But when we got him back, I think that the other starters uh, feed off him too. Yeah. What about yourself? What about if you were to self-scout yourself? Or I, I guess a different way to ask it would be, what would your players say about you um, that's different during the postseason as opposed to the regular season? Because I think you are the best postseason manager of all time. If you just look at the numbers, like you've you've done very well for yourself. So do you change at all in the postseason? Or is it the same old, same old, stay consistent throughout the year? You know what? I think the players would say that, that I, I'm consistent. I hope they do. I hope they don't say, hey, the manager was panicking over there. Uh, but I do things different. I, and they were good with it. We, we, we moved the order around, hit young eight, uh, drop low down, and these guys were all in. They didn't care who did it, how we did it. They just wanted to do it. And so they were good with that. They they were good with me. I didn't have to sit down with each one of them, say, hey, this is why we're doing it. Uh, so I, I think I, I had some trust uh, 
from them. But uh, I, I think more than anything, they, they said, no, he's got the, the same calmness that he has during, during the season. That's what I'm hoping they would say. Yeah, the uh, dumb question here, but I, I'm dying to know it. Obviously, postseason is different, but regular season, how often do you think you get bored watching baseball? There's a lot of games. Get bored? Yeah, where you're just like, damn, this game is kind of boring. <laughs> or your mind wanders. Yeah, your mind you wanders. I, I, boring may be a little strong, but I will say <laughs> there are games. You know, we we were a club that could blow out teams, so you know that that's going to change the game. And you know, you're you're actually hoping it gets over. To be honest, you don't want to pummel somebody too bad. Or we've been on the other end, and that's the same way. Now, uh, back when I was with the Giants, you know, what we were called. The, the team with torture that's every game was a one round ball game yeah this was a, a, a little you know just a different brand of baseball and uh so we had quite a few of those games uh, i probably used more position players pitching this year than i've used my whole career and that's where the games change a little bit so i yeah i'll be honest those are games you're hoping that you know in pretty quick yeah board might be the wrong word but like do you ever catch yourself in the middle you know like say the middle of july you're on the road and you're like, you kind of snap too, and you're like, wait, I haven't really been paying attention the last half inning. Like, whoops, I, I should probably start watching a little more. Yeah. Ah, man, I I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I, I always have a fear of getting surprised. Yeah. That, that's my thing. You know, I talk about with the players, be prepared, whatever. And this game will humble you, man. As, as soon as you drop your guard, something's going to happen. And, uh, I've been there, and I so I yeah I try not to doze off too long. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's a good answer. That's probably why you're one of the best managers of all time, and I would be it, terrible at it. <laughs> I got another dumb question for you. So um, one thing I love about baseball, besides the new big bases, the big bases are really nice. I'm sure you'll agree with that. They're slightly bigger. But um, from the managing perspective, it's the only sport where the uh, the leader of the team gets to wear the uniform on the field. So you, you wear the baseball pants, you put those on, you put the jersey on. I would love to see it in the NBA if, like, Tom Thibodeau has to, has to put on, like, an actual jersey to go out there to coach the game. Do you like getting dressed up in the pants, or would you prefer to wear, I don't know, like some, uh, some athletic shorts or some uh, like, a, like a track suit before a game? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, you know what? I, now that I haven't really thought about it, but uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to wear a sweatsuit or something, uh, you know, just a little more casual, but – no, actually, I like put the uniform on. Actually, for years, my uh, first couple of years, I still put spikes on. <laughs> I like it, yeah. In the concrete dugout. So, you know, I, there's something about putting that uniform on. It, it is special. And now there's so many of them. I, that my biggest uh, worry on the days, I'm going to walk out with their own uniform. They, they get so many different ones. And uh, so my office is separate from the clubhouse. So I got to walk in there just to see what union we're wearing that day. Yeah, and you also are known for having maybe the biggest head in baseball. And I don't say <laughs> that as an ego thing. I'm literally saying you have the biggest head. More what, brains. What size head do you have? Well, yeah, the hats, yeah, normally I'm an eight and an eighth, but uh, some hats I wear eight and a quarter. If you notice, <laughs> I think it snuck up on MLB again during the postseason. When you win, when you clinch each round, they break out the hats for you. And none of them fit. It looked like a beanie <laughs> on my head when I go back and look at it. Well, that, that's the dumbest look. I look like Gomer Pyle running around there with his big head. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of, my, I guess, my claim to fame, this big head. And back when I played, you know, that was really abnormal. So, they had a special order, my helmets and hats. And, uh, and sometimes I'd take a while and, you know, I wasn't a good player. So, I got moved around a lot, played five years of winter ball. With that hat, that helmet had to go with me. Do, mm -hmm. and, uh, it, so it, it had about 20 uh, coats of paint on it. Do, do you think there was ever a front office that was like thinking about signing you and they're like, but we're going to have to get a new helmet and like hats. <laughs> like this isn't yeah, worth it. Yeah, I mean, no, it's the club. He's a panic. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they're in full panic when I show up. Oh no. And especially at the press conference, you know, they need a little bit of time of time to, you know, get a hat so I can wear it at the press conference. Yeah. yeah. I think it makes you smarter. It means you got more brains in there. So I think it, I think it's an advantage. Yeah, I wish. I, I wish that, that was the case. Yeah, so I, there's a couple of parking spaces in there. Trust me. <laughs> there was a uh, there was a one that I saw. So the hat was hanging on by dear life in the celebration. I think when you get a snapback, do you go with the last button on it, or is it the last two buttons that you use? 
Well, I try to go with the last button, and, and it looks so bad, and I just unbutton. That's the best way to go when when it doesn't fit and just kind of lay it on the head. And, uh, you know, eventually it's getting to the side and everything. Like I said, now you're looking like Gomer Pyle and walking yeah. around. You guys are too young to know who that is. I know no, Gomer, we know I, Gomer I, Pyle. I know Gomer Pyle, for sure. Come on. We know that. We know our references. <laughs> hey, Prime members, did you know that you could be listening to this podcast episode and all Barstool Sports podcasts on Amazon Music ad-free? simply included with your Prime membership. All Amazon Prime members get access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts. You can enjoy shows like Part of My Take, Spittin' Chicklets, and many more. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app or visit amazon.com slash barstool23. That's amazon.com slash barstool23. And now here's more Bruce Boshi. Uh, one thing we love about managers when they get kicked out of a game uh, has there been times when you're like, I have to get kicked out to fire up my team? Like, I'm not even, I'm not even mad about anything, but I gotta, I gotta use an excuse to get, get the guys riled up, and like, I'm gonna go, or maybe even a time where you're like, I kind of want to sit in my office, air conditioning, watch the rest of the game in here. Yeah, no, you, you, you're right on both. <laughs> There's times, yeah, you got to go out there. I think when uh, things are getting stagnant, and you know, they, they need, you know, to know that you know you're passionate about the game, but there's some games there where, as you mentioned uh, earlier, they get a little long. And uh, so you're looking for that window where you can go out there and just give them the business and, and go to the office and watch the rest of it. What's your, have you ever done the uh, dirt on the, on the home plate move? That's my favorite. Yeah. You know, I did that early. Uh, I did that in 95, 96, uh, a few times. I love that too, to be honest. Uh, uh, Earl Weaver was the best. Uh, uh, no, that that was one of my favorites, but uh, I, I don't move around quite as well now, so I, I'm afraid I'll go down kicking dirt. <laughs> it's it's just such a hilarious concept to be like, I'm going to make you clean, and then the ump usually tells the catcher they have to clean it, and it's just the best. <laughs> like the entire interaction is so funny. All right, right. No, it's <laughs> you know that part of games kind of left us to be honest. I mean, it's still happening, but really the only, only argument now is balls and strikes. Yeah, you know you got. You know, just replay and uh, or review it, and so it's it's a little, a little different game uh, as far as that. And and I know that's an entertaining part of the game. I'm not the best at uh, my arguing. I, I need to work on that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. But it's 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 a it's a great part of the game. I loved it when the umpire went out there. Speaking of review, real quick, um, I'm I'm so fascinated by this because every player that ever has like a bang bang play thinks that they made the play and they immediately tell the uh, the manager hey go look at it do you have a rule with some of your guys cuz you know that they're just not like they never are right like hey look i you think you caught that but i like you think you catch everything right right you know that reminds me of uh Steve Finley great player i had center fielder and uh and, you know he was always safe and he got me thrown out of more games <laughs> just back when you could review it and uh, geez, I don't know what he cost me, but uh, you know, back then I think it was 250 bucks every time you get thrown out. But you know, they add up. And, uh, but now with the review, it doesn't matter if they do that. You just look at it. Now, where it's going to come into play, and I think Major League Baseball is going to get it. Trip away that a challenge system on balls and strikes. Yeah, you get three, and and same thing what you're talking about with the players at the plate. Every strike they call is not a strike or you know it's so that's going to be the tough one you got to tell the players if it does happen hey we can't burn these up on you all three so you know we you got to be positive on this because it's that's that's more of a case where you got a challenge right then yeah that's how the the first batter of every game is going to be like use all three challenges <laughs> like i was right <laughs> yeah you're right there was actually a specific game this year it was on september i think 20th it was against the red Sox where you got ejected and the day before, I believe you told your team or you made a public statement to the effect of we need to be more locked in at the plate. And then the next game, you get kicked out for arguing balls and strikes, showing your guys that you're locked in at the plate from the dugout. That's how locked in you are as the manager. So you get kicked out. They go on to win that game and your team rallies behind you a little bit. Would you say that that was the best ejection of your career? Um, I mean, you never know. You know, if it made a difference or not, but, you know, you certainly feel better when, when that happens and they do bounce back and you're hoping, well, well maybe that did supply some kind of spark, uh, you know, to get them going again. Because 
it's a long season, man. It's 162 games. And some of these games, you're going to go out there flat. So you got to do what you can to get things going. And, and if you go out there, you get thrown out, come back and win. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. It, it's a pretty good uh, feeling for a manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of our favorite players who you manage, Tim Lincecum, when, you, when he's came up and you're managing him, were you like, how is this possible? How is this guy throwing like this? He's so small and like he's just a freak. He that's his nickname. What what were your thoughts when you saw Tim Lincecum for the first time and you're like, this is this is something like I've never seen before? Yeah, no. When first time I saw him was uh, my first year with San Francisco in 2007, and opening day, of spring training, we go out on the field. And Dave Rigetti, my pitching coach, says, uh, by the way, look over there. I look at this little scrawny kid. Uh, he probably weighed 140 pounds. And I'm serious. I mean, he he was small. He goes, that's your number one pick. You know, last, last year. I said, you're kidding me. And I looked at him. And, you know, after about two throws, he was winging this thing. It had to be close to 100 miles an hour. We put him in a game. I mean, we used him that spring. And I said, this is incredible what this kid's doing. I mean, you're talking about doing everything just right, you know, as far as, uh, the, you know, having that torque when you're throwing. He, he was just, he, as you said, he was just a freak. And uh, I was still amazed. And I will say this, uh, after we just won, I, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of Timmy in the last couple of years, and he sent me a really nice text. Uh, he's like my kid. That's how much I love this kid. But I'm still amazed. Uh, things in this game and he is one of the more incredible talents that i've had in all my years uh, yeah. he's right up there at the top yeah. yeah he was so much fun to watch him pitch um if you're dealing with a, a personality I, I don't know if tim would be like this i don't know what he was like during games but uh but madison bumgarter certainly would come to mind uh if you're the manager and you go out there and you're you're going to take the guy out and they give you the look like don't take me out of this game have you ever been talked out of taking manager out or taking a picture. Yeah, out. I think a couple times. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I don't, I didn't this year like I normally do, where I go out there and, and check on him, just to look in his eyes, whatever. And uh, but um, and, and and Madison was one of them. I mean, he he did he never wanted to come out of the game. Man. So there were times, and when he would be honest, he goes, "Listen, I know I can get this guy or next two guys, and then I'm good." So uh, I'd leave him in and. Um, to uh, even Chris Young, our general manager, he was telling a story uh, um, back in the postseason in uh, 2006 when he was pitching in, against the Cardinals. He said, you know, you went out there. I thought I was coming out of the game and uh, you left me in. But, you know, just looking at him, talking to him and telling him what I thought he's, you know, he's the right guy out there. Uh, I left him out there. So, yeah, you're going to have those moments. Uh, that's That's the beauty of our game, you know. That, you know, you talk about analytics, you know, that you know, it comes in handy, all that stuff. But you just got to have a feel for it, I think, for the players, who, who, who you know, who the man is. And uh, and uh, hopefully that may, helps you make your decision. What I love about you is we, we can tell how much you love the game of baseball. Like, you you really love baseball. And we, we've talked to some football coaches that have uh, almost broken down in tears describing how much they love football when they talk about uh, just the game of football. Can you just talk about the game of baseball and why you love it? Gosh, yeah. I go back to when I was a kid. Uh, I never forget my dad. But I, I'm the son, son of a sergeant major that you know we moved every three years, and uh, he's one that uh, got me playing baseball. But uh, he got stationed at the Pentagon, so he took me to watch the uh, Washington Senators play. You know, this is back in the late '60s, and. Uh, and first time I saw the field, like a lot of kids, I, I went, oh, my goodness. They had Frank Howard, who unfortunately just passed, uh, who ended up being a coach for me back when I was with the Mets for a little bit. And uh, that that's all I wanted to do. It's uh, all day. I just play baseball. And uh, and then when, you know, my career ended uh, as a backup catcher, uh, I knew that I wouldn't stay in the game. Now, I didn't know in really what role. And but once I started managing, I said, "Man, this is what I should be doing." And I never thought that time I'd manage in major leagues. I had the manager of a major league club on such a high pedestal. I would have been happy with managing minor leagues my whole life. That's how much I loved it. And, uh, 
you know, it just, it just is in me. And, and my wife said the same thing when I came back this year, she goes, I, I knew he was going to go back. You know, he, he'd be watching the games and making comments. And uh, I, I knew how much he missed it. And, and uh, sure enough, you know, after I tried to help the French team and, uh, you know, help them qualify for the WBC, uh, I knew, you know, if I ever had a chance that uh, I, I would come back to manage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, a, I mean, that's a great. It, it, you can tell, like PFT said, it just comes across how much you, you love the game. A uh, couple last questions. What's the hardest thing about managing a baseball team that people, that fans like us get wrong, where it's like, you don't understand this part of the job that is more difficult than maybe uh average fan understands. Cause from where we're sitting, being a baseball manager is the best job in the world. Cause you get to just, you know, hang out with the boys, make a couple calls here and there. It feels like a good time, but what is the hardest part that we miss? Well, that is the, the best time. I mean, that's what we all love to do is when that game starts. It's it's before the game. There's no getting around, especially in the postseason. Uh, you know, your obligations uh, you know, to you know, talking to the media. Um, you you really don't get as much time with the team as you would like because you got to do uh, you know the network guys. Uh, you know, Fox, they would come in, and then, of course, the radio guys, and then you have your local media that had the local radio, and then you got to go in a room and uh, and address the national media. So you're running the gauntlet for over an hour uh, dealing with all your uh, media responsibilities. And, and so that's that's the toughest part, I think, because you, you, you know, you, you want to spend time with the guys. You want to get out on the field, which it's early. Don't get me wrong. You're getting on the field, but uh, there's no, uh, there's, there's not a lot of free time. And so that's, that's uh, one of the toughest things. And the other one I'll say is uh, at the end of spring training. Spring training could be my favorite time when it starts. You know, you're getting with the guys, you're having a great time and uh, getting back on the field and, um, you know, just, just, uh, you know, getting to know everybody, uh, the new players. At the end of spring training, those last cuts are horrible. They're, they're the worst. Yeah. I was one of those guys. I know what you're going through. You think about it, it's a big difference. I know what minimum salary is, 750000 whatever, versus going down to AAA, you know, making forty or fifty. So it's, you know, it's it's tough call for these kids, and I, I understand it. So that's the worst part of it. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. It seems like the media part would be pretty challenging because you've got to do an hour worth of media for different people, and then – you have to figure out different ways to say the exact same thing to every right, person that you right. talk to, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. You, you do. Because you, you do get asked the same question so many times. So, uh, But, hey, it's your job. You understand it. Uh, you know, that's, that's part of why, we, you know, we do what we do, I guess. Uh, we know it's it comes with the job because somebody's going to do it. And anytime you can take it off the players, that's our job. And mm -hmm. so you know, that's what I try to do. Ho hopefully we're the first people to ask you if you get bored. <laughs> do you get to eat <laughs> yeah, during no, games? It, you ever, you ever have like a hot dog during a game? It's like I said, it's a, it's a grind. It's a <laughs> grind. Yeah. Do you get to eat? PFT was wondering if you get to eat during games. Do you just sneak one? I've never eaten during the game. I've seen a couple of managers do it. I, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't, but uh, no, I, uh, I tell you what, the food is unbelievable, guys. You, you guys need to come by a clubhouse. I'll show you. It's like a five-star restaurant, how these guys eat now. Back in, you know, when I came up, you know, you got a bowl of chips and maybe a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Now, you get a four or five chefs in there, shrimp, uh, steak, chicken, all this. It's unbelievable how well these guys eat. Yeah, I love that. But you, you trade it all for the coffee with the greenies in it. <laughs> 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 That's a little different than today. Yeah. Uh, I had one last question, rowback question, rhoback.com. Use promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything at rowback.com. Uh, baseball, the sound of baseball is the best. So tell me in your years of being in the game, managing, playing, who had the best sound off the bat? Ooh, man, man that's a good one. Uh, tell you what, uh, Adolis Garcia, that's – that's pretty good. Uh, you know, Seeger, he's right up there, too. When you're hitting, you know, coming off the bat at 115 plus, uh, that's good. Now, Sheffield, I coached third when Sheffield uh, was with San Diego. This is back, what, 93, 94. And, uh, oh, my goodness, the sound of coming off his bat, uh, it's just different. And, uh, you know, those guys, 
the elite players, uh, you, you, you can tell when that ball's hit, who, who's hit it sometimes. That's, yeah. that's dangerous, too, to be coaching third base when Gary Sheffield's it's up. It's the worst. The it, you know, I, I'm not the quickest guy either, you know, it's a – it's, it's and I'm a big guy, so I'm 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 a pretty good target. <laughs> yeah, uh, as a third base coach, were there ever any situations where uh, a guy's you know rounding second is coming at you and you just have no idea whether or not to send him, and you just decide, uh, screw it, I'm going to send him. Like it seems like that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a split second choice. Yeah, yeah, no, I tell you, there's nothing worse too. You get the guy throwing about twenty by twenty feet. I got to tell you a quick story of Larry Walker. Uh, from, you know, Larry's from Canada. I mean, unbelievable instincts in the game, base running, and uh, just had a cannon for an arm. He's in right field, and uh, base hit to right field, and our base runner's coming around. And I'm not going to challenge him. I mean, he's like a line drive one hopper. He knew it. So instead of coming up throwing home, he came up and threw right to third base. Meanwhile, I let the runner come around third base and the ball got there before he even had a chance to start to get back. That's probably my <laughs> most embarrassing uh, time on the field. Yeah, being third base coach, there's a lot of pressure. First base would be the best. Yeah. First base, you just you take their batting glove from them, pat them on the ass. Nice nice job, good eye. I like the way you waited for I'm that pitch. Say this. Yeah. Back. Yeah, back, yeah. back. Third base coach, I would, I would suck so bad because I'd be like, well, what if the throw's bad? So I'd send everyone. Like, make them make a throw. <laughs> just get all my guys thrown out. <laughs> but that's why you're the you're the, you're the best. So, Skip, this has been awesome. We'll take you up on it. Maybe when you're in Chicago this summer, uh, you come in the studio, bring some of the guys. Uh, we'd love to meet you in person. And and congrats again, incredible four four World Series. Um, you the last five times you've been in the playoffs, you've won a World Series four out of five of them. The only time being the Cubs, no big deal. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, congrats. You're you're a legend. I, I appreciate that, guys. I enjoyed my time here with you, and uh, thanks a lot. Yes, right. absolutely. Thanks, Skip. Bruce Boshi was brought to you by BetterHelp. Part of my take is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or some anxiety about it, but adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress, all the change, Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. I've personally benefited from therapy. I think a lot of you out there could. Therapy is great if you're thinking of making a change in your life. Therapy is great if you're trying to sort out some conflicting thoughts in your head. If you're having a hard time sleeping, try talking your issues out. It will be very helpful to you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You're going to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash PMT. Okay, Hank, let's do it. Guys on Chicks, give it to us. Reading. You're a great reader. Thanks. You're welcome. These are fucking long. Oh, no. Hey there, lottery ball winner Hank and everyone else. Ah, uh, that's and, bullshit. Yeah. What's bullshit about it? Okay. Just ask a question. My husband and I have been married for almost five months. I recently just learned that he records his farts on Snapchat and saves them in his memories to show his <laughs> other guy friends. Yep. I'm a little concerned. I'm now just finding out about this. Is this normal guy behavior? Yeah. Or do I need to be worried. Yeah. No, that's exactly that's, like if, if you were to do a hierarchy of things that you would want your husband to be posting on Snapchat, this would this should be number one. That rules. I'm in a Snapchat group that's called Only Farts. <laughs> <laughs> Only, yes. Like literally. Can if, you add if, me? You get, I don't have Snapchat. Can you add me? <laughs> well, that would be no. But you're if you post anything but a fart in the chat, then yeah. you get kicked out of the we chat. We should we should do a Twitter Spaces where it's just dudes farting. <laughs> where we tap guys in and then they hold it up to their ass and fart. Yes, can you yes. wait, Max? Can you can you next time you get one? Can you can you call me? I over? think there's some saved. I could. I could oh, probably, I could probably hit me with one. one. Hit me with one. Let me. I'm pulling it up. All right. I love it. Only farts. <laughs> that fucking rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait oh also the guy who sent this is the kiss guy oh the kiss guy. that guy does yeah, it all yeah, yeah he's yeah. a dual threat yep kisses any farts <laughs> what more do you need all right next one 
Hey boys, go birds. My Our son is seven months old and named James, but nicknamed Jimmer after my husband's great uncle Jimmer. My husband started calling the baby Jim Ursay a few months ago, <laughs> and now just calls him Ursay, yep. which yep. he responds to. We're both fans of the show, but I don't know how much Jim Ursay, I don't know much about Jim Ursay other than what you guys talk about. Is it okay to call our firstborn son this? And what should I know about my son's new namesake, Jim Ursay? Oh, uh, well, let's a, not do that. He's a great guy. Um, <laughs> solid owner. I think everybody in Indy loves him. Uh, the one thing you will you can say about Jim Ursay is that he successfully avoided hiring Josh McDaniels by yeah. taking an hour-long shit in his bathroom. Don't let your kid drive. That would be the case. The, but, yeah, you're, you're screwed. Once a nickname comes, it's, it's, it's there. Although, I feel like the nickname, there's like – waves to it like it's obviously what your your parents call you but then you'll get a nickname maybe like in like elementary school and then maybe get another one in college so you can just ride it out and maybe it will be something different but ursa is a great nickname it is a really good nickname yeah um what's the what's the whale's name tokate tokate you could switch up to tokate tokate the beautiful orca r.i.p hey boys congrats on the new office Thanks. My boyfriend is a big Steelers fan and is looking forward to them playing the Browns this Sunday. However, I need to, him to pick me up at the airport a little over an nope. hour drive. My flight lands at 3.45 p.m. Should I let him watch the whole game, or should he be a loving boyfriend and pick me up from the airport, since we know the Steelers aren't really that good? Wait. Uber. Wait. Whoa. Steelers are, have a good record. They said, they said that they're flying into an airport that's over an hour drive well, away. It's, it's probably like a Pittsburgh, West Virginia situation. Yeah, there's an airport in Pittsburgh, though. I know. No, I know. No, I'm saying it. like they may, might live in West Virginia. Like Pittsburgh Airport is yeah. an hour away from like a lot of where people live. That's true. That's a long drive. That is. That's yeah. a Uber. very long drive. Uber. Also, would Jake like to apologize for saying that the Raiders beat the Steelers? Yeah, I screwed that up. Okay, I apologize. I just got a tweet. That's the only reason. I got why. a. Yeah, I think it was like eight tweets from the same guy. People are pretty crazy about that stuff. If you mess up one, that's why I always team. try to follow up later, and then yeah, they listen through the whole show, and they're like, "Whoops." Yeah. 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 It's all right. I get, yeah, I get I like, apologize. it's a good morning when I wake up and I don't have like a hundred tweets about something I fucked up. I think the only good way to compromise on this guy's on chicks would be if he drove to the airport and then you drove him back from the airport he so he could watch on his phone. Yeah. But then driving the airports in the middle of the game. That's the part that he doesn't want to do. You could get there super early. Yeah. Yeah. He could go to the bar. Let him get drunk at the airport bar. Then he can't drive home. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last one. Hey, Big Coffee, the Duke of James Madison, Mr. Gomez, best in the office, Maxi Pad. My fiance likes to listen to sad breakup songs as he works out. I asked him about it, and he said, it makes him work out harder because of the pain and passion felt in the songs. Is this normal? No. Do other guys do this? Uh, no, it's kind of weird. I Unless you just he's got some broke up. He's got some deep-seated shit. Maybe he's, he's listening to sad breakup songs to scare him into getting into such good shape that he'll never get broken up with. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. I think there's like a, a grace period like after a breakup where it's like appropriate, but I don't think it's weird to just all the time. popping those on all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just be a normal guy and play Fort Minor. Yeah. Fort Minor fucking rocks. I feel like he might be ready to break up with you or in love with his ex yes that's mm. bingo hank got it hank knows hank got it that's real that's not fake probably yeah probably who knows <laughs> Who's it's, up to, it's up to you to determine did you really get the lottery ball we don't know i did no that's that could be fake my reality whoa 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 whoa! that could be fake yeah, in my reality you didn't get it yeah you never got it but that's an oh that's, that's an illusion question everything right yeah, that's an illusion question everything all right, uh, let's wrap up numbers. 18. I'll go 71. Seven, 20. You got this? Three. Yeah, in my reality, I have. I'll go eight. Shane 10, Pug 37. Pug. <laughs> Pug. 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 Ooh, 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 ooh. Ma memes, what do you have? Three. Max at 71. 20. Pug. 59. Oh. 59. Oh. Love you guys.